Hi, I'm Todd Knock, and you're listening to Dinner and a Podcast. Go ahead. Make my day. The first rule of Fight Club is you do not talk about Fight Club. Here's Johnny. I want the truth. You can't handle the truth. This is Sparta. The greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world he didn't exist. You talking to me? Houston, we have a problem. Uh, just a drink. I'm about to shake a monster. Why so serious? I want to make an offer, can we? Welcome I to Dinner and a Podcast. Here are your hosts, Steve, Joe, and Mike. Hey everybody, welcome to episode 81 of Dinner and a Podcast. I'm Steve, and with me and my co-host, Joe and Mike, and we're three best friends that get together, share a meal, and a conversation discussing all things pop culture, TV, movies, and comics. Be sure to check out our Facebook page by searching Dinner and a Podcast and our website, dinnerandpodcast.weebly.com. There you can find comic reviews, full comic synopses, dinner and movie reviews, and just a bit outside, which is our sports section. And check us out on Twitter and on Instagram and on Facebook at Dinner and a Podcast. Today we got Sebi on with us again. Yes. <laughs> What's up, man? How you doing? Very nice. <laughs> Glad to have you back. Really appreciate you coming on. You're always a good uh which I know Phil's going to be very excited to hear your voice. He was petitioning for you to be the fourth member of the podcast. Oh, really? Yeah. I mm, mm, mm. you never know. So you'll no longer be a fill in. Oh jeez. Oh good oh, lord. I see where this is gonna go. I didn't get that joke last time. I know you did. So I, I have a question. Yeah. In, our, in, in, in our intro, you yes. mention our website. I do. Yeah. Yeah. When was the last time anyone's done anything on there? I updated frequently. Do you really? Yes. When was the time you looked, looked at, at it? it? Yes. <laughs> the, the, when you created it and said, "Look at this," and yeah. I went, "Nah," and you went, "No, seriously, come on, look at it." <laughs> I worked really hard on that. <laughs> Speaking of which, I'm glad you say that because that's a great segue. What do you update on it? I update all the episodes. You can watch, you can listen to all the episodes on our website. You don't have to listen to it on um, like iTunes or SoundCloud or anything like that. You can listen to all of them on the website if you wanted to. So but, just carry your laptop for instead of your phone. Well, much easier. Well, well, let me, let me. Yeah, work. You put on your laptop well, or something. Well, let me tell you this next thing. Uh, I was, I did the um, New Dorp. High school Comic Con by myself like two weeks ago, right? Just to get the word out there, it's a small high school in Staten Island, but they get like a thousand people that walk through the Comic Con oh, every year. Okay. Um, so I set up a table, and I was you know trying to promote the the podcast like we did at um at, at my school uh-huh. that time. And there were a couple of people. One guy in particular who was like, "Oh, I I would love to listen to your show. Are you on YouTube?" And I was like, "No, we're not on YouTube. We're on SoundCloud and iTunes and Podbean and Stitcher and whatever else." And he's like, "Well." I, I, I listen on YouTube. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, well, do you have a smartphone? We're not on YouTube. He goes, well, do you have a smartphone? I was like, yeah, I, I have a smartphone. And uh, I was like, well, it's free. You don't have to pay for any of the stuff. It's, it's there. He goes, I listen to YouTube. <laughs> he goes, like, like I, he's like, you like Joe Rogan? Like that show? I'm like, well, we like we love Joe Rogan. Oh, uh, he's on because he does it on YouTube. Yeah, I was like, we, yeah, yeah. we are in a Joe Rogan show. I was like, but um, I, if you like Joe Rogan. We have a Joe. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, you might like us if you like Joe Rogan. He's short like Joe Rogan. <laughs> Um, so what I decided was I, I contacted, uh, Andrew Brooks <clears throat> and Andrew has been making these really cool 10 to 15 second, like preview. Those clips are my favorite. Us. They're amazing. So he texted me this week and he's like, listen, I'm really busy. I, I, I'm not going to be able to get to doing the preview for this week until later on. I was like, yeah, no worries. Um, I was like, I have a proposition for you. Would you for, you know, certain amount of money, take our podcast, the full episode and make a video of just just like our logo and where to find us, websites and things like that, and put them on YouTube. Like, just that one picture with the whole show behind it, put on YouTube, because I was doing it for a little while at the very beginning, and it would take, like, 30 minutes for my computer to save it as a video file, and then it would take another 30 minutes to upload it to YouTube. So I was like, if you did this for episodes 50 through, through the present one, 50 through 80, yeah, how much would you want? And he gives me some crazy low number. And I was like, I'll give you double that. Just, you know, do it. So today, three, four days later, all of them are up on YouTube. He, he texts me. He goes, I put up all the all the videos on YouTube. I put up all the previews that I did for you on YouTube. And I rearranged your entire channel. I was like, huh. <laughs> Excellent. How much uh, is this going to cost me now? Well, no, it was, it was for that price that, okay. I, that I gave him. One million dollars. So I was like, um, would you mind like continuously doing this every week for us? 
and running our Instagram page for us. And Instagram. Yeah, we're gonna. Yeah, we don't do Instagram right. We don't. We don't do any of us. We don't do. Right. This is all I want to do. This part right here. Right. No, that, I don't even. We like don't doing... expect anything more out of you, Mike. It's fine. Fantastic. This, this, this is all you need to do. <laughs> I don't even really like preparing anymore. Right. Like I, I do the Twitter, <laughs> uh, but I can't do. I, 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 and Joe does the the Instagram, but we can only do so much. We both have jobs. Kind of. <laughs> we both work very hard Wait all day long. <laughs> did, Joe, did you hear his last <laughs> episode about what I he does at work? <laughs> he does less work now than he has all year. Oh, I've colored. So... Somehow in the summaries, he'll be doing more work when there are no students around. I, I had... I didn't have anything till one o'clock today. Oh my God. <laughs> and tomorrow, I have to sit in an empty room for the first 50 minutes of school, and then I'm done. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> it's amazing. I love By it. one o'clock, I had cursed God three or four times today. <laughs> but I just... I want to thank Andrew Brooks for doing that. So check out our YouTube channel. Um, just search Dinner in a Podcast. We come right up. All the episodes from well, from 50 to 70 are up, or 50 to 80 are up right now. All the previews are up. Andrew's doing a great job. Hopefully it'll uh, increase our listenership. Um, I just want to thank him for that. We did have uh, two winners of the MoviePass subscription. So we got another review? We got another review. Uh, is it a good one? It's a good one, yes. Thank, uh, thank goodness. The two new reviews... One was called was by Bulls in the Ring. That was last week that we said Raging it. Raging Bull, Bulls in the Ring, whatever. <laughs> Bulls in the Ring, and he never got back to me yet. So I, we need a we need an email address for you, Bulls in the Ring. And this week we got it's titled like Sitting with Friends, five star review by Music underscore Lover. That's spelled L U V E R. Um, this podcast is super awesome, informative, and feels like sitting around with the guys to talk pop culture around the dinner table. So thanks for that, Bulls in the Ring and Music Lover, Music Underscore Lover. Um, please email us your uh, email address or contact us somehow through social media, through Instagram, through Facebook, or you can email us at Dinner End Podcast. That's Dinner End Podcast. There's no A in there. People always put the A in there, but that was taken. Can you believe that? Dinner End A Podcast at Gmail was taken. So it's Dinner End Podcast at gmail.com. Uh, so yeah, get us that. And Chris Bratton, he wins the third one. He was the. He got us on Facebook and said, I would have reviewed you again, but I already reviewed you once, so I can't win. But I told him I'd give it to him. Okay. So those are our three winners. Bulls in the Ring, Music Underscore Lover, and Chris Bratton. As so always. you're technically linked to Steve's movie pass. Account. No, I don't think so. It has nothing so to do with it. So technically, you've committed fraud <laughs> many times already. <laughs> nope, nope, nope. It's all, it's all in the clear. And as always, check out our friend Marie DeZio's Instagram page if you like. If you need cookies or... Cakes or something. MurdersRUs.com. Murders I heard murders are up last week. Murders are up 15% yeah. since Trump took office. Um, Is that real? No. Oh. <laughs> no. I was like, why do you have that statistic? No, since this amazing. podcast came out. Mike doesn't know what's real what's fake anymore. There are so many people saying, see, I told you. <laughs> um, check out Marie's Instagram page, at the ZO Bakes. tries to fight and go back to D- it all the time. D-I-Z-E-O-B-A-K-E-S. <laughs> She makes amazing cake pops and I like that you called them out like last that. week. <laughs> On what? So we're not doing the whole cookie thing, Steve? Joe's <laughs> not here? Yeah, that's Joe's thing. That's Joe's thing. It's yeah, me. but I had to do the news. It's me. That's true. That's you did a true. great job. Thank you. This week it's really on. easy. <laughs> Just make shit up, right? <laughs> Just read all the headlines off of Google and move on. This week on it the show. It only takes like eight, nine <laughs> seconds. Yeah, it's true. Who knew? This week on the show, we're doing um, Paige's suggestion. This was a, a fan question a couple of weeks ago from uh, one of our big fans, Paige, who asked us what were our favorite movie uh, quotes. And we said, you know what? That's too big of a topic to do on just uh you know just a wasting time segment or a social shit time so we're going to do a whole episode on that tonight just for you Paige. um but before that hey joe do you have any news for us no i was fired last week i heard your episode i actually listened <laughs> you bailed you bailed <laughs> you guys bashed me for 20 minutes did we your brother did a lot we had, had a lot of that yeah out. <laughs> i'm pretty sure he did well by we i mean steve <laughs> right so you got any news <laughs> you know is it yes who knows it? Well, now we know. And knowing is half the battle. News with Joe! So, Steve, mm-hmm. I got the best news for you. For me? Yes. All right. Your favorite. Sex robots? Your second least favorite artist? My second least favorite artist. Roseanne? No, no, no. Like, comic book artist. Uh, with John Romita Jr.? No, no. Least favorite. Yeah, I hate him. John Romita Jr. Wait, why did he not draw for you? 
What? Oh wait! Oh, uh, Ethan Van. Ethan Van Sky. We like bash two artists on this. Now show. we got another one. I want to know why he doesn't like John. Because he Peter stinks, Jr. and I don't like it. <laughs> his art stinks. But Ethan Van Skyver. Yeah. What about him? His book got canceled. What book? Hal Jordan and the Green Lantern. Oh Corps. no! It's like my favorite book. <laughs> <laughs> you told the complexity. Him, you told him Steve. to suck it. So yeah. Good. We showed Kinda. him. Oh, I really like that book, though. Sorry. That's okay. But I thought you'd good. be happy that his book got canceled. Well, he didn't do every book. He did, he, out of the 45, 46 issues, he, he probably did. I just saw Ethan Van Skyber, yeah. Green Lantern, yeah. and I thought of you immediately. Oh. Oh, that's upsetting. I think that was Marie's doing. <clears throat> yeah, Marie oh, killed yeah. him for me. I think so. <laughs> Thanks, Marie. A lot Appreciate of threats. that. Threats. <laughs> oh, yeah. Or maybe it was uh, a Kate doing. Ooh. And who knows? You'll never know. Right. But um, you said you saw Solo. I did. Did anybody else see Solo? No. So, thanks for ruining my wasting it. time. But no, no, no. You brought it up last week about how it was projected to do... 130 million? 130 million. Right. Yeah, something like that. So it only grossed 103 million this yeah, well, weekend. Uh, it's a holiday weekend. That should be a good people thing right. for it. No, no but people... Uh, depends. Do they, people do they go count? to barbecues and stuff like that. Yeah. This no, holiday... I, that's when I saw it. I saw it holiday weekend. So it's Saturday night? The thing with, like, I was ready to go see it Friday night, right? I came home from work. My wife said, you want to go see it? I was like, I would love to. We had dinner, and then one of the kids fell asleep. And she's like, you could still go. And I was like, eh. Like, I, that's a Star Wars movie. Yeah. Yeah, I should. I've seen every one of them on opening night. Every one. Now we're four or five days past it, and I still haven't seen it. I want to see it. Right. But I'm not huge. I might go see Deadpool first. I haven't seen either of yet, so I'm yeah. going to go see Deadpool first. Um, but compared to Rogue One, that grossed 155 million. So I wanted to know if you what you guys thought about the grossing of this movie compared to others, and if that's going to hurt more standalone movies coming out in the future. I, I saw the movie; it was okay. I could see it, it wasn't as good as Rogue One. I think it's tied a lot to Harrison Ford, though. I think a lot of people are really old school fans, traditional fans. Yeah. And they didn't want anyone replacing their iconic Han Solo. And plus the the horrible media that this movie got for the past year mm-hmm. right. didn't help. I mean, you've heard nothing but neg- negativity around well, surrounding this movie for a year. I think I think Last Jedi really hurt this movie. And I think That's Last Jedi too. really hurt Star Wars. But Last Jedi did a lot more money than the others. Yes, but that I think that was the tipping point for a lot of fans. Yeah. Yeah. Childish baby fans. Mm-hmm. Right. right. But I think that was the tipping point. Like I, I I will see people no matter what the like Star Wars topic is, yeah. they just immediately jump to that movie and uh, like threads and start bashing mm-hmm. that movie and I'm like, "Jesus, it wasn't exactly what you wanted." So you you've given up on Star Wars altogether. Right. And that's what a lot of people have done. They're really childish about Star Wars. And like some don't hardcore know why. fans are doing that too. Yeah, but like why <clears throat> Even if you don't like the movie, right? Yeah. It doesn't destroy the ones you love. Of They're course. still intact. The way you just go, I don't want to, I best not think about that one. Right. But, ooh, my God, do fans not like that movie? I don't know. I mean, I don't like it at all. I, I don't. But it didn't stop me from seeing Solo. I didn't dislike it. Right. It, I've just, I'm more interested to see Marvel now than Star Wars, which is sad because I never would have thought that as a kid, mm. ever. But I'm way more interested to see a Marvel movie than a Star Wars movie. Well, you were talking about how the movie was tied more into Harrison Ford and his persona. Mm-hmm. The next standalone movie is going to be Boba Fett. Is it Boba Fett or Obi-Wan? Boba Fett. Both, they're ha- doing both. It has and Yoda, a I think. director now. Well, Boba Fett had no personality. Well, that's what I was going to say. Do you think that makes a difference? He, he's um, a, cult, no, a cult classic how favorite. How could they ever get that right? Ever get that right? Why? What do you, why wouldn't they be able to get there? He no, didn't no, talk. No. I, I don't doubt it'll be a decent movie. Yeah. There's no way they're going to live up. The, the problem with Star Wars is expectations. Right, right yeah. There are huge expectations. There's no way. I would never want to be a part of that movie because you're never going to make it right. You cannot make these but fans he doesn't happy. But he doesn't have a personality. No, I, I get mean, yeah, but People have projected the, yeah, yeah. a personality yeah. onto right. him. Do you know what I mean? They have. There's such clear thoughts and definitions of what Star Wars is for people in their minds yeah. that they've made up decisions about what Star Wars is or mm-hmm. isn't. Yeah, like Solo's not a bad movie. It's just that, like, see, now I have no, uh, I have no love for Han Solo. Like, I not that I dislike them. I just he's he not one of one of your favorite characters. I have no affinity yeah. for him, right? But I know what Han Solo is, and I know what he's supposed to be, and what he's about. And he wasn't that in this movie. He wasn't a scruffy nerf herder. No, he he was a, <laughs> he was very he was too nice. 
he was way too nice and way too happy. Like, mm. the way I see Han Solo is like this, he's a scoundrel, yeah. right? Like, he's a scoundrel who'll rip you off every chance he gets, because that's what he does. Or he's he rips a space off. pirate. He's a space pirate. And he was just always doing the right thing for everybody. He was always trying to be nice and do do good. And that, like... He was, like, uh, almost like Luke in A New Hope, like, trying to be the hero. No, he was just a nice guy that, would, that was helping people. Mm. And it's like, didn't Leia bring that out in him? Yeah. Like, there was, wasn't that the special thing about Leia? That she brought out this the goodness in this scoundrel of a man, yeah, you know, and but but he seemed like to be a nice guy the whole time, and if this was just like a one-off like sci-fi flick about some space pirate guy, it would have been a good movie. It would have been a fun little movie that you want to see and talked about, but because it had Han Solo attached to it and Star Wars attached to it, it didn't it didn't jive right. But it was it was a decent movie. the The storyline was fine, right? Um, well, see, is that the problem that it's a good movie? If you just take away all the expectations, yeah, no, that's what that's, that leads yeah. right to your point, right? Because yeah. you have expectations of who and what these characters are, yeah. Even though the people who create them or are still creating them have no loyalty to what your expectations are, correct? Right? A good yeah. movie's a good movie, right? Like I left there, I had a good time. It was it was all right, yeah. which is all you really want out yeah. of that kind of movie. You don't looking for a deep movie, right. right? There were there were some cringeworthy moments where you're like, oh, did they have to? Did they have to really hand feed you that that yeah. thing or? You know, tell you how he got his name was really bad. Like, the way he got the name Han Solo was very, very poorly done. Mm. Um, he speaks Wookiee at one point to Chewbacca. Mm. And to see him go, rah, 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 was really awkward and weird. Like, so there were some, like, cringeworthy moments. But overall, it was fine. Like, I left there not caring. I, I, I walked in not caring, and I left there not really caring. So, <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, you know, it didn't ruin any of my expectations, but it was fine. It was all right. All right. It was a little dark. Like, uh, like, brightness wise, like it was hard to see things in the in the movie in the scenes. So Disney is opening up alcohol at all sit down restaurants now. Yeah, yeah. it was only it's only really affecting one park, right? Uh, Magic Kingdom. Yeah, that was the only one that didn't mm-hmm. have it. But they're yeah. gonna do like uh, each restaurant. They're gonna have specific drinks paired with certain meals at those. Yeah, like a restaurant, yeah, yeah, like yeah. a signature drink. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, that's fine. D. Was it uh, a hindrance when you went to these restaurants? Like, did you feel like you wanted a no, drink, no, no, but you couldn't get one? No, no. because in my mind, uh, there were places I went to get drinks in Disney World, like specifically went to right. get drinks, mm-hmm. like in Epcot, and then there were other places that were for the kids. I, so that's that's a uh, something that carries over from the time Walt when Walt Disney was alive. He he hated seeing drunks, yeah. right, right in his place. So he never wanted alcohol because he was afraid people would you know drink copious amounts and then be messy and ruin the aesthetics of what he was trying to create but they've done that automatically by pricing you out right you you know how much it would cost to tie one on at disney world yeah like yeah it's yeah it's ridiculous amount of money bank before you yeah i mean you you could do it but it'd be i I did it but it was you know (laughs) it'd be very impressive right um so uh, serving a glass of wine not a big deal i have heard a counter argument though from the disney restaurant people saying that it's greatly increased their table turns mm-hmm. mm. which is a big problem if you're a restaurant operator right you make money especially there right. turn tables turn tables turn tables turn yeah. tables adding in another course essentially right we have to order drinks deliver drinks from a bar mm-hmm. maybe, Slows it down. maybe you'll say and have a cordial after like my favorite kind of drink is coffee with like baileys yeah, yeah. or coffee with something on the side mm-hmm. like that's you're adding time and it's it's re- i think it pushed their table turns from like 45 minutes to over an hour Oof. which cuts out a whole seating every night yeah so mm-hmm. but it must be very profitable for oh, them yeah. sure yeah. otherwise they wouldn't be doing right. it yeah the markup on alcohol is ridiculous i'm fine with that yeah. i they found a new way to print money <laughs> yeah, which, uh, that's okay. That's what Disney does. That's their thing. Liquid. That's fine. Well, speaking of printing money, they're opening up. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm back, guys. <laughs> Segway and son of a bitch. Uh, they're they signed a deal with a stadium in Australia. I heard about this? Called, and they're gonna rebrand it, uh, Marvel Stadium. Yeah. Oh, good for them. And it's gonna yeah. be like uh, like Qualcomm yeah, or City yeah. Field or whatever. And they're gonna have a. I don't think that's absurd. No, the first ever Marvel retail store in a stadium. So like you would go to like City Field and yeah, you have Med the, Shop. Yeah. Have, well, who the hell would want a City like a Citibank shirt from City Field? Right. But Marvel, that's a good idea. Right. It's called. It's, it's going to be called Marvel Stadium. That's great. That's cool. 
That's it's great. A, it's not like um. I think that's brilliant. Like, yeah. and I don't think it's that odd. They're a company, right? Right. What sport do they play at the stadium? It's in it's one of those arenas that they holds like various events. I think it's soccer. Well, I tried to look it up. I couldn't find. I, uh, I was listening to another Aussie podcast and they said it was a football. It? Okay. I was like, that's pretty cool. That's Marvel a good idea. Stadium. I don't think Marvel needs to promote its brand anytime. Well, know? this was Disney trying to out, yeah. out have their own stadium. I guess they must have reached out and said, hey, we need a theme for this stadium. Can we call it Marvel Stadium? I heard something crazy, speaking of Disney, that they are trying to get copyright laws extended in perpetuity in America. Okay. Because. That means I, for life? F- forever. Yeah. Because Mickey Mouse mm-hmm. is coming to the end of his copyright. Uh-oh. And they don't want it to go into public domain. Mm-hmm. Oh. So uh, apparently, like, it's something they're just doing with Congress, like, S- slowly. slowly and real quietly. And some people are freaking out because it's, yeah, it's good for them to protect their characters, but it's going to affect tons of other things. Right. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, uh, the reason you're seeing a, a growth in Robin Hood and Sherlock Holmes is they're not. They're public domain now. Right, yeah. you, anyone can use them. Mm-hmm. But once the Disney characters start falling in the net, Disney's... Um, I don't want anyone using Mickey Mouse. I want it, Disney using Mickey Mouse. Well, but if, what if you... If a big fan of Robin Hood, you don't want the person who wrote Robin... You know what I mean? Like, it's it's just... It's different yeah. side of the same coin. Yeah, I know what you mean. I don't want anyone using Disney characters, but I, I have a love for those characters. Right. Like, do you care if anyone uses Frankenstein? Nope. Right. You know what I mean? But why? Someone created them just the same way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, but on the same token, like Disney, Walt Disney kind of did that with like. Yeah, but Mary Peter. Shelley created Frankenstein. Yeah, I know, but like that's Peter a book pa- and books are for nerds, so it doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> that's my answer. Like all the first like Disney movies were like uh, yeah, public the fairy domain. tales. Yeah, most of them are fairy tales. Exactly. Right? Yeah, oh, can, correct, can, correct. Yeah. Yes. Like, do they have yes. the, do they have the rights to like Cinderella and Snow White? I think they have a right to their version of them. right. Okay. okay. Like their the, their dr- image. Like they don't care if you use Cinderella. They don't want you using their their Cinderella. likeness of right. Cinderella. Right. Okay. Huh. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I hear you. I thought that was crazy that they are trying to change right. copyright laws. This real like shh, don't tell no. <laughs> yeah. I think that's I think that's pretty boss of them though. It's pretty good. Yeah, and apparently like it's doesn't look like. It's gonna be fought. I guess that'll have to go to courts eventually. Right. But mm. yeah, they're gonna look. They get laws changed. That's crazy. Yeah. Hmm. On the other side of, of Disney's rivals, Universal, they're looking to start up a Star Trek land. <sighs> did you hear about that, Mike? No, I did not. Apparently, a while back in the '90s, they did a little um, exhibition in Vegas. Oh, that was hugely popular. That was supposed to have rides. And all that, and just didn't. They couldn't fit it all. I guess wherever they had it. There was a there was a push in the '90s in Vegas to make Vegas like a family destination, right? You know, like they <laughs> New York, New York built the roller coasters mm-hmm. and the top of the stra- stratosphere, circus, circus. Yep. right? Top of the yeah. stratosphere, they mm-hmm. built all the rides. Mm-hmm. Like, hey, we're gonna make this a family destination. People were like, there's lots of whores and strippers and lots of gambling and booze, <laughs> right? Like, yeah, we don't want to bring our kids around that, right? But yeah, that that I think that was one of those things that was built. Of trying to bring in other people, so now they want to they want to build Star Trek land or world or universe. Do they have room for that? Is I there? don't. I, I guess maybe they would start t- taking away other older rides that aren't as popular. But if you had Star Trek land and then Harry Potter land, yeah, that would make it killing. Of? So well, I at some heard... point you probably get rid of Marvel. Oh yeah, well Star Trek land would be full of some interesting characters. Apparently, Universal settled some kind of lawsuit. Or came to an agreement with someone that had owned land between Universal and land they owned, right? So they had no corridor to right. get to yeah. some yeah, big yeah. parcel of land that they owned, and that's been settled now. And there's talk that they're going to do a third theme park. Oh, that's cool. Or I guess technically a fourth, right? Because they just yeah. opened up the water park. But that apparently just happened in the last couple of weeks. Maybe oh wow! So it. now there's talk like, hey, we have enough land to do an entire another theme park. Hmm. So. Star I'm sure, that, like, and I'm all for it. Universal's doing all of that way better than Disney at the moment. Yeah, Their you stuff said is that amazing. With, with, uh, Harry Potter, right? yeah, yeah. I love Disney. It'll always be I'm loyal to them, but ooh, Universal's doing that better at the moment. Really? Yeah. Oh yeah, wow. yeah. Uh, one of our favorite actors. He is going to star, direct, and produce a Netflix version of The Humpback of Notre Dame. Really? What's Ron Jeremy doing? Oh, God. <laughs> I was not ready for that. He caught me off guard. <laughs> <laughs> Idris Elba is going to oh, that's cool. do the trifecta. Wow. And he's going to play The Humpback. Oh. Is he? Yep. Hmm. Is he? Yeah. 
All right. Not 100 percent on that. I just don't care about the character that much. I think no, he's an amazing actor, so it'll be probably yeah. be fantastic. I'm but. just amazed by how much Netflix original stuff they're putting out now. Just My so. thing is, I just have no interest in Quasimodo right. or the Hunchback of Notre Dame. Um, but I'd watch anything that Idris Elba's in. Yeah, yeah, but the fact that he's acting, directing, and producing. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, I don't know what producers actually do on uh, movies. Yeah. Doesn't uh, John Favreau do that? He's fine. Well, John Favreau directs and produces and he's acts not, in. He's not the lead. Oh, yeah, You know, sure, like, I, Quasimodo, like, if he's all into makeup, then he drags his dead leg over to the camera, and he's I like... I need you to be more... <laughs> I need you to be more empathetic in this scene. <laughs> or he's method, and he can't get out of that character. <laughs> I mean, it's a great story, but, like, is it going to be a movie, or is it going to be a series? It's a movie. Oh, all right. Yeah. The here's, movie. here's the problem with uh, all the stuff that's being produced. I can't watch it all. Right. There's just yeah. too yeah. much crap. There's a lot of stuff. Yeah, like my wife has been buried in, um, what's the third? Thir- uh, 13 Reasons. 13 Reasons again. And she's like, you want to watch it? And I'm like, yeah, I kind of would, but I'm like, don't wait for me. Yeah. Like, because I just. You'll never get to watch it. No, there's so much stuff now I know I'm never going to get to watch. Yeah. yeah, my list keeps growing. Growing but... and growing, yeah. And I get, like, I'm cross, I'm adding more than I'm crossing off yeah. to it. Yeah, but I don't watch any network television. Nothing. No, I, I was telling Steve the other day. I put on Archer, and I was trying to catch up on the like the last few episodes, and I fell asleep because it was so boring. Yeah, I'm like, why yeah, am I wasting my time good. watching this? Yeah, Westworld season two is not great either. It's all right. I watched the first like four or five episodes. Yeah. And it seems like nothing's happened in the in, in those episodes. It seems like the same thing happens every episode, like a little bit more of nothing. <laughs> which, which is, I don't know how they're pulling it off every week. <sighs> A little bit more of nothing. Right. Wow. Yeah. You know what I'm not going to watch? Uh, no. Thundercats Roar. Oh, God. I was dude. surprised you guys didn't talk I about wanted, this last I week. I wanted to throw that through my computer. We're through not the on wall. our best footing when you are not here. Kind <laughs> yeah, of steering Joe. the ship. It's yeah. a, we're steering kind of news. a leaderless army. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but no, that looks terrible. Please do not stop drawing because you can make a cartoon out of anything that you've drawn. Yeah, I guess. So, did that bother you that much? Did it bother me that much? In, in in reality, I could care less that it exists. But, like, I don't want... I don't know. Like, it, it was cool. And, and it was fun as a kid I to watch I just don't that like that. Show. Is that, that like that art? really poorly... Like, it looked like a two-year-old drawer? Yes. It looks like Steven Universe. I don't know oh. what that means. I don't know what that is either. Uh, it's a cartoon. I, I um, figured that. But like, with, like, it's like worse than Rick and Morty. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, I think that's why um, I can't get into, like, Rick and Morty... And like the Rick and Morty looks like they try, but they have like their own art style. But yeah. this is clearly a style, right? On this, yeah. <sighs> I don't yeah. know, Mike. It looks terrible. There are other. There are lots of other cartoons that are just like. This. Like if I wanted to make a cartoon, I could draw that. Yeah. And you look at me and go, "That's terrible, Joe. We're not making a show of this." Yeah, but I don't like. I like they they perp like the people who are drawing it clearly purposely have the did that. Yeah, it's purposeful. They've made a decision to go in that direction. I'm sorry. You seen it? You seen this? This artwork? It's not. It's not worth it. Like, it, come on, dude. No, that's terrible. It's terrible. Why even call that Thundercats? It's... Right. You could just do it something else. Like they have. They have stuff like that already. Like we don't need to take Thundercats and and make it into that. Because you know what's going to happen. They know some people are going to show their kids on top of the ones who are just going to like it because it's new. And it sounds like them too. It's not even like they they put like squeaky. I would have rather than put squeaky voices on them. Then use like then use like the real Lionel voice. What's wrong, Robo Bo? Like that? Like, that's the, <laughs> what? Let me see if I can that's, find that's, Steven Universe. That's his voice. <laughs> sort of uh, omens. Give me sight beyond sight. Uh, yeah, here's here's Steven Universe. Like it's, it's it's very much like that. Oh yeah, it's exactly like it. It's very much like Steven Universe, and it's probably on the same channel, Cartoon Network. Do you watch that just because yes. it's called Steve? I don't watch it. Kid, my, my students watch it. I don't watch I've never seen Steven Universe. My kids have like this so, on their back. So it's things. geared for like how old are the kids that it's geared for? Uh, I'm assuming like high school kids. Young, like, like seventh, eighth grade hmm. kind of kids. Like, if six, you seven, show me that Thundercats, I would imagine it's like five year olds. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not going to watch it. No, I thought it was like shit. I was like, please, God. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm not watching it. Why did you approve this? Yeah. But that's the news. That's what you got for the news? All right. Uh, that's going to lead us into... What's our next thing? Wasting time. Mike, want to get lead in? <laughs> Take it away, Tony. Pew, pew. Now it's time for everyone's favorite segment. How are you wasting time? Or how are you pissing off your wife? All right. Who wants to start wasting time? I have an interesting story. All right. Um, 
we're going through a lot of very long, difficult days, you know, opening up a new restaurant. Mm -hmm. I arrived the other day. Uh, now I'm, I'm really tired every day going into work. Uh -huh. The second I walk in, I'm like, it's an hour before we're going to open. You know, someone else opens. I'm just there to kind of guide into the middle of the day. Mike, there's a phone call for you. Who, who, who is it? Like, I didn't even get in the door yet. I still have my lap, my phone in my hand and my tablet. They're like, it's the electrical company. And I'm like, oh, all right, one second. I'll take it in the office. I go in the office and I'm like, this is Michael speaking. How can I help you? Uh, I'm from PSE&G and we're en route to turn off your power. Hmm, and I'm what? like, what? He's like, I'm 30 minutes away. We're going to pull your meters and turn off your power. And I was like, what? It, it's Saturday before Memorial Day. Like, you, I'll kill you. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm going to do, I don't know, a thousand people today. He's like, oh, I'm sorry, sir. Uh, bill wasn't paid. I'm like, we're a giant corporation. There's right. no way this bill wasn't paid. He's like, no, sir. I was like, just give me your billing department's number. Yeah. So he gives me a number. I hang up the phone. I call the billing department. It's an automated, hey, thank you for calling PSE and G. Right. Press one for English, yeah. two for Spanish. Don't, I'm like, you, don't you know it's Memorial Day? Press, <laughs> hang up. <laughs> so I press one. Then it's like, enter your phone number. I enter my phone number. Please hold, hold music, right? Yeah. Uh, a lady picks up the phone and she's like, hey, are you calling from X, Y, and Z location? I'm like, yes, I am. She's like, how can I help you? I'm like, I just got a call from a tech that he's in route. She's like, yeah, sir, it's 25 minutes. So he said 30, and now it's been five minutes. Yeah, yeah. She's like, right. your schedule will be disconnected in 25 minutes. And so I start going round and round, like, how could this be? She's like, to have an account in Long Island, you have to give us a deposit, which sounds reasonable. Like, you have to give us an initial deposit yeah. in case you ever go out of business okay, so that we have enough to pay your last bill. Now, yeah. I remember doing that when I had my own yeah, place. Like, right. first like they average, you average like your first two months and they go, yeah. hey, we need an extra month. That way, if you ever go out of business, yeah. we have our last month. All right. I, I don't know what you want me to do. Yeah. I, I don't have that. Right. Like, I can't just st like, I'm like, it's Memorial Day weekend. Like, can't you call your corporate office? I'm like, it's Saturday. Yeah. Memorial Day weekend. Yeah. And I'm not going to get anyone the next... 20 minutes right and she's like no it's actually 22 now so i'm like <laughs> oh my god i was like can you do me a favor who's your boss yeah. and she's like i'll get him puts me on hold hold music again he comes on the phone and we're going, 18 minutes <laughs> and we're going around around the same thing he's like let's we're like after a couple minutes he's like sir you got like 15 minutes left he's like can't you just give me cash give my guy cash and then i at went at this point don't you think like this is a scam so then i that's i went cash PSCNG wants cash. Is that what you're telling me, sir? So I start at the same time on my phone now, Googling PSCNG to see right. if it's the same number. Yeah. Right? And I Google it, and the first, like, 1 800 and, like, whatever, 767 yeah. is the same. The right. last four are different. Right. But, like, I don't know if this is billing and that's customer sure. service. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I go, I'm going to play a hunch here. Yeah. <laughs> So I decide to disparage this man's race, nationality, and his mother. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> right? Because. If it's real customer service, he's not going to be able to hang up. He, or he has to like, he can't escalate it. Yeah. This guy escalates it. Yeah. And I was like, oh, this is a scam now. <laughs> oh, so I let scam out. Scam by kindergarten. Uh, God, you should have started recording the. Well, because like once all, I, all the racial epithets that he said probably wouldn't be. I, then I was the like, <laughs> so like he's now, he's like, he's coming back at me saying hey we're coming like he's just doubling down yeah, yeah so i'm like you know what i got three weeks worth of anger to let out and i the, <laughs> the typhoon of hate i had to send towards this man oh my and then God. i i hung up the phone eventually and then i sent an email to my boss i'm like listen this is what i think happened either it's a scam or in 10 minutes we're not gonna have an hour <laughs> i'll let you know <laughs> Power never turned off. <laughs> right. Yeah. Wow. Can't you yeah. give me cash? That's like, that's when I was like, oh, that's, there's no way. Yeah. Like, there's no way. He's like, well, give, just give us 50% in cash. Mm -hmm. And I was like, so then I was like, I'm going to try this. I knew, like, because anyone from a business, sorry, is not going to. I would have liked cash. to seen the people that showed up if they showed up in a PSENG truck, if they had a hat. That's a PSG uh, like, on it. I would have loved to seen those guys who were going to show up in fifteen called, minutes. Yeah, I would have called the police and told them, like, "Listen, our, I think this is happening." Oh mm -hmm. yeah, you should let it happen and call the cops. Like, look, this is what happened in our conversation. Like I said to the guy, like when I got to the the boss, I'm like, "Dude, I, I'm not getting anywhere with you. I need to speak to your supervisor." Yeah, yeah. He's like, uh, I, "I don't have a supervisor." I'm like, "You're Mister PNCNG." <laughs> He's like, "What do you mean?" I'm like, "You don't have a boss." 
He's like, well, do you have a boss? I was like, of course I have a boss. I have two. I'm married. Like, I was so, like, I was so done, you know? Right, right, right. And he's like, well, could you get me your boss? I'm like, of course I could get me your boss, but I'm not the one at the issue. I need to talk to your boss. He's like, well, he's not available. I'm like, I'll hold. He's like, for how long? I'm like, till he comes. He's like, what if it's Monday? I was like, I'll hold. Oh, and I'm like, I think you mean Tuesday. Right. <laughs> Monday yeah. Memorial Day, you yeah. dope. So we, like this was the first 20 minutes of my day, but it really brightened my day. Oh, this is excellent. When I, when I was like, all right, let's try this. <laughs> Imagine how I'm many like, stores. where are you from, sir? Because <laughs> he had an accent and he told me. And I'm like, all right, here we go. Strap in. <laughs> yeah. People Ooh. heard me screaming through my office. They're like, what was that? I was like, business negotiations. <laughs> Yeah, they wanted to turn off our power. We still have light. Yeah, I, I, I got like when I done. I'm like, oh god, I hope that was right. <laughs> like he could have just been really pissed that he was working Memorial Day like me, but no. Oh my god, what a crazy scam! Yeah, no. To have a number set up that answers with an automated. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. then like press one, press two. I almost want to call it back and press two to see if it does the whole thing right. in Spanish. Oh, we should have called live on uh, on the air. Oh, it was crazy. Yeah, but. <sighs> What a scam! Yeah, and I then wonder when I, it had any number you put put into their system comes back as yeah no your your power is going to get turned off. No, it's probably not even that. It's probably they're probably all in one room, right? Yeah. So the guy that called me that I'm the driver, right? 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 He probably says call this number, and the, the lady sitting next to him, and she's yeah. he, like, you know, this business is going to call you next. So no matter what I punched in there, yeah. like I could have punched in your phone number, and they would be like, are you so and so business? Because who's going to purposely punch in the wrong right. number? Right. But it was all just to make it look and feel really real. We wow. should definitely crank yank in one of these days. And I think if I like, I was like, what's so worst case? I'm going to have more day weekend off. <laughs> <laughs> eh, all right, let's see what happens. I'm all in. I see you're crazy, and I double it. <laughs> Really rolled the dice on that one. I did. Wow. I think he. I. I'm sure that guy went. God damn! I found the craziest man in Long Island. <laughs> <laughs> he has nothing to lose. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was good. Oh man, but, there's no one's gonna top that story. Yeah, right? I, I got Nobody. nothing after that. Really? It's not even that good a story. Oh, that's, that's a good amazing. story. Oh, that's, that's a good amazing. story. Oh. Yeah. Oh man! So Steve just added that to the end. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. I watched the Knife or Death finales. That wasn't that wasn't great. No, no, it was it was fine. It was all the winners. Did anyone threaten to turn off your TV halfway through? <laughs> nope. Don't you do it? Anybody lose a finger? No one lost a finger. Um, it was it was kind of the same exact show. Just the challenges were a little harder. Okay. Um, like uh, they had to like chop through like dollies, <laughs> right? Okay. Like wooden dollies. Right, is that what it's called? Yeah, dowels. Not dollies. Dowels? <laughs> like dolly dollies in a dress or like no, dollies like, <laughs> that roll around on the floor? No, like a wooden stick. A, a dowel. dowel. So they had the... They had <laughs> Why like, would they oh, use the word stick? <laughs> I was trying to get the right word. Um, you, got, you got it. Yeah, I got it eventually. <laughs> Swinging them as... So the dowels this time... That's what happens to the losers on this show. <laughs> the dowels this time were like much thicker and like squared off instead of round. Right. They had the... The fish was way bigger. <laughs> That they had to cut through. It's a mackerel now. <laughs> it's a lot bigger fish. The chicken was was two chickens like tied. And they together. were alive. You got to get them, chase them. It was a dinosaur chicken. Um, oh, beakless. <laughs> oh, remember beakless? Um, yeah, it was just more of that stuff. But it was fun. I I enjoyed the whole season. So, are you kind of disappointed no one got injured? Like no, not at all. Not at all. This is the whole reason you watch the show? No. I like wouldn't. someone taking off three of their five fingers? <laughs> I ended up marathoning it uh, like the week before. Oh. And I was like, Steve, this is amazing. Yeah, it's great. Here in Goldberg. The commentary is fantastic. Because <laughs> neither of them know what the hell they're talking about. <laughs> and how you can make cutting something interesting without anybody getting hurt the is knife beyond guy, me. The knife guy knows what he's talking about. No one else knows what he's talking about that's watching the show. Because he's talking about like different strike positions and like I, I don't uh. understand any of this stuff um but yeah I liked it I'll, I'll, I'm in for I'm in for season two it's amazing um I got rid of my fire stick because it crapped out on me what do you mean it crapped out on you like every time I would turn on the TV I'd have to like unplug the fire stick from the back of the TV for 30 seconds and plug it back in to reboot it because it wasn't loading it was just it was frozen and I couldn't I couldn't get it to do anything I couldn't get it to play Netflix so never mind fire Cody. stick defrosted oh, I was gonna say he porned it out <laughs> no I, I never used it. it out I never used it for porn 
I got a no, I got a dedicated out, computer for that. <laughs> huh? Your your fire stick burned out. It didn't defrost. <laughs> it, yeah. it fizzled. They just having a separate yeah, side just conversation. Yeah, separate side conversation. <laughs> so you gonna replace it? A horrible pun joke. No, uh, I might get the Fire TV. <laughs> That's what is, I have. Yeah, I yeah. have a TV in the living room and yeah. a as far as stick in the bedroom yeah they're all basically the same thing yeah, but I'm, smoke I'm thinking, alarm doesn't I'm, go off I'm hoping it has a better <laughs> I'm hoping it has a better uh, processor in it call so the that, fire department I guess so that it doesn't freeze I'm gonna mute them <laughs> in a second they're gonna get muted um, he's gonna put it next to his fire toaster oh the fire toaster no, no corn tacos in there um, that's when I almost set my house on fire with the tacos oh in the toaster oven um, but yeah I got rid of the fire stick um, I'll set your up uh your uh, movie box, yeah. All right, cool. I'll set you up with that. Uh, I already talked about Solo. I saw Solo. Um, Did so you see it Solo? <laughs> no, I saw it with two, three other people. Uh, you know, there's a Funko documentary on on uh, Netflix. What's it called? I think it's called Funko. <laughs> <laughs> Breaking news here again. Clever girl. Did you watch it? Clever girl. What did I, I watch? The first like uh, thirty. It's a two-hour documentary. Wow. I watched the first 45 minutes before it was it was like 1 o'clock in the I'm morning. I'm seeing a trend with Steve. He watches things and knows nothing about any of it. Last it's week, kind of like the news with you, isn't it? <laughs> it's sort of odd thing. I don't want to burst your bubble, Joe. It's sort of what we do. Last week you put on Kevin Smith. You thought it was Kevin James. It gives you a disclaimer on the front of the episode that this was recorded before he had his heart attack. When's he going to say he's the king of queens? <laughs> the best thing about that when he said, oh, I thought it was Kevin James. Was that Kevin Smith talks about that all the time? But people think that he's Kevin <laughs> James all, all the, the time. time. Yeah. Oh, good. Then it's a common thing. So fuck you. He kept waiting for Leah Remini to come out. When's he gonna talk about Scientology? She's hot. I freaking love her. Anyway, <laughs> the Funko documentary is actually pretty Where's good. Where's George's dad? He's my favorite character. <laughs> Arthur. Uh, oh, see. See, I know it. No, the whole beginning of it. I didn't know that they started way back in 1998. I had no idea that that company's that old and that they started with bobbleheads. Like, it was strictly a bobblehead company. Hmm. Um, and that's all they did was bobbleheads. And they started with Bob's Big Boy, which is like a burger joint in California. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and they just got licensing and more licensing. And they were doing it out of the garage and uh, it went through the owners, you know, making their products. And, and eventually, the owner got kind of burnt out by all the the business that he was doing and he mm-hmm. gave it off to this to this other guy who was like a friend of his and he's the one that turned him into pop vinyls and, oh, a, wow. lot, and a lot of the old school um collectors from like 98 to like 2004 2005 they wanted nothing to do with the pop vinyls right that that those are the ones that we know today because they don't really make the bobbleheads anymore what were they made were they like ceramic the bobbleheads no, they were plastic oh plastic. they were still plastic uh i don't think they were ceramic um maybe the bob's big boy ones were because mm-hmm. they looked really nice yeah um and they would have uh, Funko Days or Funko Funko Fridays, I think they were called. Right. It was like conventions for Funkos. And I had no idea, like, they were that big. Popular. Yeah, like, I think I'm nuts with all the Funkos I have, but there are people out there that are way, way crazier than I am. Um, so, yeah, I did, I did the first 45 minutes. Uh, I got up to when, just after they sold it to that other guy. Mm-hmm. And they started making the pop vinyl. So, right. I'm going to continue watching. It was one in the morning. I had to turn it off. Got it. Um, the Toys That Made Us, season two. Did you guys yeah. watch it yet? I, I oh, watched two out. episodes. Yeah, it's I out. Know. Yeah, it's only four episodes. Okay. Um, like last time? Yeah, so it's, for those of you who, who are kind of new listeners, we had the ability to interview the executive producer of The Toys That Made Us, um, Brian Volk Weiss. We interviewed him. Uh, I, I don't know what episode it was back. It might have been 10 episodes back. Check it out. It's just it's the, the toy episode. Um, and it was a 25-minute th- interview with the executive producer of the show. He was great. He was awesome. With us, he talked to talked to us about the show, about his experiences with toys, and and interviewing all the different people on the show. If you haven't seen it, it's on Netflix. It's a eight part documentary. Uh, the first season is four episodes, which were Star Wars, GI Joe, Barbie, and He Man. He Man. This season, it's Star Trek, which I'm surprised about, and everybody, but it was very good. That yeah, episode. it's a good one. I like that one. Transformers, right? Um, Lego, and Hello Kitty. Uh, I've seen them all except Hello Kitty. I'm gonna watch Hello Kitty, but I haven't gotten the chance to see it yet. The Lego one was really interesting. That was really cool. That was that. So far, that one's my favorite. Yeah, that was the, the best one, one I'm excited to see. Yeah, dude, I never played with Legos oh. as a kid. I never really liked them. The history behind them. it's amazing. Yeah, I had no idea. You know what country they're from? They're from Denmark. Yeah, they're yeah. from Denmark. You I, know had, that? I had no clue. I don't know. I thought they were American company. You know, stupid old American Steve thinking everything good America. comes from America. Everything America. comes out of Staten Island. 
<laughs> no, everything goes into Staten Island. Nothing comes out. down old trash and yeah. make Legos out of it. But yeah, that was, it was... So a, you just mentioned Transformers. I don't know how you didn't get this in the news. You know the Transformers series has movies has been canceled? I heard. We talked about After this. Bumblebee. We did? No, yeah. we didn't. No, yeah. we didn't. It just, just happened. happened. I mentioned this like three weeks ago. No. They were, no. Re- they were rebooting their... No, it's no, done. done. No more. No more. No more. Oh, Bumblebee nothing at all. and that's it. Yeah, Bumblebee and that's they it. They finally got rid of yeah. Michael Bay and right. they went... They looked around and went... Is this what we're in? Just smoldering trash fires over in Georgia? Right, but they want to... they're just packing it in. They're not doing it. That's it. That's, that's at it. the current moment, there's nothing else planned after Bumblebee. In my opinion, I think they're going to see how Bumblebee, how this one does. Of course. And then see so you want to go in a different yeah. direction. Is Michael Bay directing Bumblebee? No. no. Nothing because to do Because the report that I read was they wanted to make a universe out of G.I. Joe, Transformers, uh, Mask... And there was another um, like '80s toy line that they wanted to do. Yeah, they wanted to do a. Uh, they wanted to a universe, re- right? reboot everything. Yeah, all like start from scratch again, mm-hmm. and then build their own universe. Yeah, well, we'll see. I think it's all it's all going to hinge on the the popularity of Bumblebee. It's not going to be popular. It's going to suck. You know, it's not Michael Bay. Hopefully, the, the, he's going to be a Volkswagen. He's going to be a bee, a, bu- you know, a bug. Um, hopefully, he'll talk. <laughs> you know, hopefully he'll have some dialogue. I don't know how you do a standalone Transformers movie. Oh. What do you mean? How do you just do Bumblebee? One, one robot. Yeah. Oh, um, poorly. Right. <laughs> He's going to fight the Nazis. Uh, um, but yeah, no. definitely check out The Toys That Made Us on Netflix. Great, great show. I was a little disappointed in the Transformers episode. Yeah, it was just pretty... And it was. It, I don't think it was done poorly. I just think I kind of knew stuff before going into it. I would have liked to have seen, like, in the previous episodes... They talk about like prototypes, or they show you yeah. like what the well, the original molds were for things. They kind of did that. They kind of did that. They you just know gave what, you the history. You know of what everything. the problem was with that one? There was no really down points. There was no like lows where it was like, oh, the company was almost uh, bankrupt. You yeah. know, there was none of that because like when you watch the GI Joe one and you watch the Star Wars one, like it almost didn't and happen. And the Lego right. ones, like there are so many points in that hist- in the in the company's history where they almost go under mm-hmm. and there's going to be, there's almost yeah. a no more. And then they show you internal conflict between who well, wants the rights between them, who, who was the artist and who, who takes credit for this character and that character. There was none of that for Transformers really, except when they killed off everybody in the movie yep. and then the, the, the they kind of plummeted, but then they came out with Beast Wars and everything was fine again. Mm. So there was really no like... Downside. Yeah, yeah. Which, which, which is fine, I guess. I mean, yeah. but it was a fine episode. I just didn't, I didn't enjoy it as much as I wanted to, I guess. Because that's, that's my favorite thing in the world, Transformers. And I was really looking forward to that episode. Yeah. Like, when you watched the G.I. Joe episode, were you... Did that fulfill, like, your expectations I, I, of it? I liked that better than... I, I didn't enjoy Transformers. Yeah. I, I didn't at yeah. all. I really enjoyed the Lego one, and I never played yes. the Legos. Which I, goes... To, which is something for the show. I like the Star Trek one just as well as the Lego one. <laughs> I like how... They kept saying, like, and then Star Wars happened. Like, every five minutes, they just put up the Star Wars logo, and the, that's what killed Star Trek. Like, Star Trek could not come out with a toy because Star Wars toys were just taking over the market, yeah. um, which was pretty cool. So, yeah, definitely give that a shot. And I think that's it. I mean, I got one stupid little story. I was sitting in the in Union Square your Park. Your stories are the best ever. My stories? Yeah. No, your stories are the best No, ever. yours are my favorite. So, I can't make fun of my own. So, you know, de Blasio, it's really hard. So you know de Blasio was really pushing up. De Blasio is our mayor here in New York City. Um, what's his first name? Bill. Bill de Blasio. Mayor. Mayor. Uh, I'm not a big, very convenient. Yeah, I don't, I'm not a big fan of this guy for a number of reasons. He, he does not like teachers very much. Uh, so he, so my, my wife is always complaining Because you're about wasting him. all his money doodling. <laughs> no, I don't waste any of his money. He, uh, I'm in private school, so. Um, but he, he wants to legalize pot completely, mm-hmm. legalize marijuana completely. Which, I'm in. Whatever, you know. I, I, I don't even smoke. I just, yeah. like... It, it's pointless not yeah. to. It's People pointless yeah, not I mean, to. They're, right. they're smoking it everywhere. Anyway. Everywhere. Everywhere. So, so I read one one morning the other day that you know, he's he's really put pushing the cops to stop arresting people for smoking in public, smoking marijuana in public, because uh, it's inevitable that it's going to be legalized, right? So I'm sitting in Union Square Park the other day, as I do for my lunch break. I went out and get lunch, sit down in the park, have it. And there are these two... Uh, one guy had to be homeless because he had no shoes, he had no shoes. He was just wearing socks with no shoes. He could shoes. just be a hipster. No. He's wearing socks oh, with no I, shoes. I, By that account, you're uh, homeless. Outside in the park? Huh? He was in the park. I think he was downtrodden. Let's say that. Let's say he was downtrodden. Her downtrodden. Okay? So he's sitting there with this other woman and another one of his buddies. The other buddy looked like he had it all together. The woman looked like she was high on something. And this dude was definitely high. I was like, he's, you could smell the weed around. It was like, 
like pig pen like in the in the peanuts like he right. just had like a cloud around him of yeah. like of marijuana instead of dirt and dust <laughs> but um he's watching a youtube video on his friend's phone and i could hear the youtube video from he's, he's sitting across from me in the park on the phone right and an ad comes up and you hear like you know it's like a sprint ad and you hear the dialogue between the two idiots on the sprint ads mm-hmm. right and he goes <laughs> he goes man this ad can suck my dick <laughs> I was like, holy shit. He's guy, this guy hates his ad just as much as I do. Holy shit, man. And then, uh, But he was like cracking up because he was so high. And then you know what? He, and then he starts singing Avenged Sevenfold because that was the video he was watching, which is like a heavy metal like thrash band. It was wow. pretty good. That, that's all I got. <laughs> that's my story, which is not nearly good. as good as your story, Mike. Joe, did you waste any time this week? Yeah, well, I was in, in Montreal. You were? On vacation. Oh. You were in Montreal. But uh, my stories aren't going to top your guys. Yeah, but, uh, my you, flight. You don't want to talk about. You don't want to talk about the stuff yeah. you did. Yeah. yeah. But again, I got all, stopped all at the airport. The murdered hookers. <laughs> he I, doesn't want to go to jail. Yeah, I got stopped at the airport again. Right. But this time, nothing terrible happened. Oh, that's good. But my oh my god, my flight into Canada was horrific. Really. I was sandwiched between crying baby number one in front of me and crying baby number two behind me. Right. And wingspan sitting next to me who wingspan <laughs> could not. This guy was probably as, as, as big as you, Steve. I'm you, a, he's, you're not. I'm a an gig, size you're, guy. Yeah. You don't need to like take up two seats on, on an airplane. Right. Uh, no, no, not at all. I was like up against the, the window trying to sleep. <laughs> and any time this man moved, I got an elbow, a shoulder, a knee. Like halfway across my seat, Jesus. where at some point I just stopped that and looked and go, "Hey, buddy, you're not that big. Stay <laughs> in your little square, and we won't have a problem." You're such a badass, dude. It was an early flight. I was exhausted. I just wanted to sleep. I, I have clearly have two crying babies that are just clearly, yeah, getting me so annoyed. But I can't yell at them, no, because then you're just the asshole on the plane. It's true. And any time this guy moved, he had like a stack of books with him. <laughs> that he didn't read. They just sat on his lap the whole time. And he kept rearranging them because he had no place to put them. Because instead of putting them in storage, he decided he, he's going to read four books on a two-hour flight. Right. And just every time an elbow, a <sighs> shoulder, I'm like, God damn it, I can't take it. He's boxing you out. You should have started throwing bows. <sighs> yeah. So I'm annoyed. I get off the plane. Our bags had to get checked. And you realize you were in Canada and you're like, I'm so much more annoyed yeah. now. <laughs> they, like You check your, your big bags and... They uh, they get taken off the plane. They get dropped off where where you disembark. So there's a line. I've been of, on a plane before. Right. But you, didn't, a, you didn't have to go to the carrots or the baggage claim? No. Oh. There's a they line don't of. have those in Canada. I just put them in a pile. Well, they just it's take the them luggage off. pile, eh? <laughs> they just take them off the plane and then they just drop them where, where you're. Okay. Uh, right, right on the tarmac? Yeah. Okay. Well, I had to walk on the plane. like. Oh, like up the, up the up ladder? The yeah, yeah. To oh. get on the plane. Okay. So we're waiting and there's a line of people. And this one guy just, like, cuts everybody on the line, stands right where the elevator is. Yeah. And the attendant's like, the door is going to open, and they're going to just start throwing bags. You should move. Yeah. He doesn't move. The door is open, and he goes, oh, that's my bag all the way in the back. And he's trying to, like, climb over everybody's bag to get it. Yeah. But he can't because they're like, we'll get the bags out front first, and you'll get your bag later. Right. He wanted nothing to do with it. Yeah. So my bag comes off the little elevator, and it's right at his feet. And I'm like, excuse me, sir, can I grab my bag? He just looks at me. I'm trying to get my bag. I'm like, yeah, my bag is right there that you're standing on it. (laughs) He goes, I'm trying to get my bag. I went, you know what? Fuck this. Just ripped the bag from him. I took the bag, and when I (laughs) yanked it up, it was between his legs. He just went down. Did he? He just went down. Like a moose, eh? Yep. (laughs) Yeah, I, I must have caught him right in his nuts because <laughs> oh, he shit. went down, and I just took my bag and I'm like, oh shit, and I just walked away. Yeah, go get your bag. I I, I wanted to say <laughs> go something. Go get your shine box. Yeah. I, I wanted to say something it. clever, but I was like, oh fuck, I'm in Canada. They may not tolerate this. Yeah, just took my bag and I left and got off the plane, no problem. Hmm. Look at you, man. Oh my god. But one of the days we decided to day drink a little bit, mm-hmm. and one of the one days of the, every day. We, I was introduced to this game called uh, Shut the Box, and it basically looks like a, like a mini craps table, right? And you roll two dice, and mm-hmm. there are 12... Are strippers involved in this game? No. no. I don't want to... Let's <laughs> open the is, box, Is, is maple syrup involved in this game? <laughs> Could be. Oh. 
<laughs> and you roll the dice, and whatever combination of the dice, you, f- you flip the numbers 1 through 12. Stuff the box. Whoever has the highest number loses and has to buy a round of shots. After, our, after we drank, my worst nightmare happened to me. I had to use the toilet. I had to go number two. Yeah. In a bar? In a bar. Oh. What time yeah, is day drinking, time? though? It's okay. Not, yeah, it's yeah. not nighttime. Is it like a dive? Oh, because they cleaned them up so well during the day. <laughs> well, that's not the worst part. Is it a dive? It's a dive bar. It's, okay. it's 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 not filthy, but you go. You're playing Shave the Box. Of course it's a dive bar. I sit down in the bathroom. I do my business, and I go to stick my hand to get toilet paper. Oh, no. In, in, up no into toilet the paper? Thing? No toilet oh, paper. Oh, that's such a rookie move. Yeah, How did you on, check man. that? Because I was drunk. Oh, that's nah, a good reason. Because he shaved his box. <laughs> so, like, the bathroom is not even on the same like floor as the bar, so I can't, like, yell for no. help. So like, I open up the stall door to see if like there is like the paper roll. Yeah. It's all fucking hand dryers. Oh shit. <laughs> Tell me you dried your ass in the hand dryer. I debated it. So there's Just one. wash your hands and the hand sink and then dry it on the hand. There's only one stall in the Americans. whole Americans. There's one stall. Oh. So I, I text everybody in our group, SOS, I need toilet paper or napkins. Just cocktail and napkins. Uh, but I realize no one has Wi Fi or cell service because you're in Canada. They haven't invented the cell phone yet, yeah. So I'm just sitting there going, what, what do I do right. to get out of here? And what did you do? Did you use your underwear? No, God for, thank God. After like 20 minutes, somebody came in and I was like, hey. <laughs> There's no toilet paper I here. I need toilet paper. And they're like, what? I'm like, I need toilet paper. Like, I'll get you some cocktail napkins. I'm like, no problem. Goes back with the whole, it's the whole stack of cocktail hey. napkins. I was like. Oh thank God! I just left the rest of the stack on the on the toilet seat. Oh, Went geez. to the bartender. Was like, bathroom needs toilet paper. He's like, is, there's none. He's like, how'd you get out? I was like, <laughs> you should have said, do not go. Whatever you do, <laughs> don't go in there. <laughs> don't, don't, burn don't, the seat afterwards. Don't after touch I my leave. hands. <laughs> my God, I never like you said rookie mistake. Yeah. Oh my God, it's a nightmare. Nightmare. I was sweating bullets. Thank God you didn't use your hands. Could have got hepatitis A. <laughs> Pack a box of shittings with you? No. Did now, you ask me for them? You actually I asked did. me for them too. He goes, before I leave, I think I should take the shittings. Oh, no, that was for your run. Yeah, that was for my run. How'd that go? Oh, great. Yeah, we didn't talk about that. We didn't no, get a chance no, to talk about that. That was uh, two weeks ago. Half a mile? Uh, half a marathon? Half a marathon. Nice. It was that, it was that freaking really, really rainy Saturday. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I did it in an hour and 52 minutes. Is that good? Yeah. I was going to ask the exact same question. <laughs> Is that good for a running coach? Or do other running coaches do it faster? Considering when I was 24, I did an hour and 45 minutes. There you go. And at 36, I did an hour and 52. There you go. It's not too bad. What, a half half, half a marathon? Yeah. 13 miles? 13 I could drive that in like 14, 15 right. minutes. You got yeah. a lot of work to do. Easy. <laughs> <laughs> going the speed limit. So our uh, main topic tonight is um, our favorite movie quotes. This was an idea from Paige. So thank you, Paige, for, uh, for giving us this idea. This was a great idea for a show. Um, this was hard for me because, like... I, I didn't. I was going back and forth between quotes that I use in my daily life all the time, and quotes that I I've memorized that I really really enjoy from movies. Uh, I went down my favorite movie list, and there are some of my favorite movies that I don't like any quotes. Like there are no quotes from Top Gun on my list that I that I feel are my favorite quotes. You could be my wingman any day. Yeah, I don't use that on a daily. I don't. I never use You're that. You're dangerous. <laughs> yes. I don't know if that translated really Man. well. Teeth clicking. <laughs> Uh, sometimes, Ice man. <laughs> sometimes I, I say uh, the one with goose. Talk to me, goose. I say that sometimes. Talk to me, goose. Like when a kid has trouble answering a question. Oh. Sometimes I say that, but um, pretty much I don't really. So how did how did everyone do their list? By quotes they use or quotes they like in movies? I did both. I did both. I did both. Um, but I have way more than five quotes here. Yeah, me too. Oh so, man, all the quotes. All the quotes. So I'll I'll go first with. Uh, so what's this quote you use? Whatever. Just my top Whatever. five quotes. Either that. Oh, only doing five. Oh my god. Well, no, I, we're right. gonna say all of all them. Right. Um, so let's see. Let's go with this one. You want to get nuts? Come on, let's get nuts. That was on my list. I Is use it really. I use that one all the time. Yeah. So that's uh, Bat- um, Michael Keaton as Bruce Wayne in Batman '89. Well, do we just want to go through the great Batman quotes from that movie? I don't have, have Robert right there. Have you ever danced with the devil in pale moonlight? Yep. I mean, but I like I I. Know that quote? I know where it is in the movie. We use one all the time. And where is the Batman? He's at home. Oh, Oh, watching his. Oh, that's right. We do use that all. Anytime someone doesn't show up anywhere, yeah. 
Hey, where is Seb? <laughs> yeah, he's home washing his tights. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> We've used it a lot for you. Me? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. You miss a lot of stuff. The only thing I show up to is this podcast. <laughs> I don't show up to much else. And uh, maybe one Montreal trip I showed up to. Hubba, hubba, hubba. Who hubba. do you love? Who do you trust? Because you are my number one. <laughs> oh, God. We can cross Batman off of our list. All right. Uh, Batman's a good That's one. That's a good one. There's a lot in that movie. Seb, you got one? If peeing your pants is cool, <laughs> consider me Miles, Miles Davis. Davis. Uh, Billy Madison, yeah. Billy Madison. What a There's great one. So many in that movie. Did you guys find that a lot of your quotes came from comedies? Because I No. I, no? I found mine were a lot of funny no. movies. Yeah, me too. That, I have one from that same movie. I think we might have the same what, one. What is it? I have the when he when I do it all the time at work when someone stammers I go t t t t today Junior I have that one on mine too. Anytime an employee like comes up to me and they're flustered they go t- I make it worse I go t t t t today Junior I got that one on mine too. I don't have that one. That's, what that's, a, that's a good one. Stop looking at me, Swan. No, no. I used to say that. Remember how much I used to say that? Yeah. I used to say that anytime and we saw a duck, a bird, a pigeon. <laughs> yeah, I used to say it all the time. He called this shit poop. Oh, yeah. That's, that's you guys use that one all the time. Yeah. yeah. Joe, you got one? Yeah. Jose Canseco bet? Tell me you didn't pay money for that. <laughs> What's that from? Ninja Turtles, the oh, first okay. movie. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Nice. Crumpet. Cricket. You, you got to know what Crumpet is first. <laughs> As I say that in reverse. That's a great one. Oh, man. That's a great, yeah. That's all Raphael, too. What yeah. a weird, like, unquotable character normally. Oh, those are great uh, ones. Um, I have one I use all. I most of mine like, I t- took ones that I use from like in my work life because I, I tend to quote movies all the time, and one of them is "You're killing me, Smalls." Yes. I don't know if there's a quote I use more than that. Yeah. Like I anytime someone's like, "You're killing me, Smalls." <laughs> I agree with you there. And I don't know if anyone who works for me get it would get it. Yeah. They're all ten to fifteen years too young to have seen that movie. What was it last week we used some more? Some more what? Well, yeah. Yeah. I Are love you, that movie. Oh, you're killing me, Smalls, yeah, all the time. I, I, that was on my list. He's an L seven. I have another He's one. He's a square, Benny. He's a square. I have K-K. another one. For, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you run like a duck. <laughs> That's one from that same movie. You play ball like a girl. Yeah. 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 Oh, I got one from uh, Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross. First prize is a Cadillac Eldorado. Second prize, a set of steak knives. Third prize is you fire. <laughs> yeah. Love that line. I. <laughs> I uh, I adapted a line from that movie for work as well. Yeah. So he has a uh, A B C always right, be closing, closing right. Yeah. So one of my managers, I was, in order to get promoted, we go through like a a full day of like interviews and uh, it's like a full day assessment where they see if you have all the knowledge you need to get promoted. So my assistant general manager was going through this process and he's like, "What if I don't know something?" I'm like, ABL. He's like, what's ABL? I'm like, always be lying. Always be lying. <laughs> and that was like the mantra of my old restaurant. I ended up on the wall. I was like, what's ABL? I'm like, nothing, but it refers to you. Don't worry about it. <laughs> that that whole like monologue, it's not it a monologue. It's amazing. It's so good. What's yeah. your name? Fuck you. <laughs> That's my, my name. name. <laughs> put, that, put that coffee down. Coffee's for closers. Coffee's this is for great. Closers. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's so good. So good. I'm going to throw in a Pulp Fiction one, but it's not any of the ones that you'll... Oh, man, I shot Marvin in the face. I say that one all the time. (laughs) Oh, tell me it's it's Quentin Tarantino. No, it's going to be... We're going to be like three little Fonzies here. What Fonzie like? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Cool. That's Correct right. the mundo. Yeah. That's right, Yolanda. We're going to be cool. Yeah, that's a really good that one. That's my favorite one. Which one's your wallet? The one that says bad, bad motherfucker. motherfucker. Oh, I say that all the time, I too. want that wallet. If anybody so sees that, just buy it for me. I would gladly Oh, it exists. You can get it. Uh, they, yeah, that one I've You're seen. You're 35 years old. You can't go walking around with a bad motherfucker <laughs> wallet. <laughs> yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. <laughs> yeah, you can. <laughs> I had the man of the balls with my luggage. <laughs> you can do anything he wants. That's what you should have done. Like, what's the matter? You just show him your wallet and walk away. <laughs> Which luggage is yours? The one with those bad no. motherfucker on it. That's what get that luggage tags. <laughs> yeah, That's go. what you need. Just a big luggage piece of luggage that says bad motherfucker. Yeah, you're gonna get stopped every time. Oh, but come on, it's, <laughs> it's so worth it. <laughs> can you identify your luggage, sir? Yes, I can. 
<laughs> no one will ever pick it up by accident. No. <laughs> Must be American. <laughs> I'll just get like pre like TSA screen, and every time I get on a plane, oh. just just pulling that behind you in the airport. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Uh, I it wouldn't be a show unless I um, said something from the Princess Bride. But I love when um, oh, Vasily. That, yeah. He goes inconceivable. <laughs> I, he says that like fifteen times throughout yeah, the movie, and that's, that's I, I always say that. Uh, at some point, I have one from City Slickers I use a lot whenever someone pisses me off. Okay. If, if hate were people, I'd be China. <laughs> I do that. I say that a lot at work. That's from City Slickers? Yeah. That's, That's when um, Daniel Stern. Is it Daniel Stern? Yes. yes. Yeah. He's, he's, he's talking to his, 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 his soon to be ex wife. Yeah, right. Yeah. He's like, if hate were people, I'd be China. <laughs> Because they have a lot of people. So. Yeah, that's the joke. I, I know. I, I love that movie. Yeah, that's all, such a good one. There's probably other great ones. I that crap one. bigger than you. <laughs> when uh, Jack Palance is talking to Billy Crystal. Yeah, there's even a good line where uh, when he's talking about going to flirting with the girl, and he goes, "What do you want me to say? Say hey, hello. I want to wear your ass like a hat." <laughs> <laughs> that happened this weekend. Did it? That how you got hepatitis? E? Not me, but it happened to somebody else. <laughs> oh, jeez. Um, Seb, what's your quotes? Um, they just jump in. I think we're doing good just jumping in. I fought in your general direction. <laughs> oh. Your mother was a hamster and your father smelt of elderberries. That's one of my favorite fucking movies. Which ever. Monty Python is that? Holy what? Grail. Holy Grail. Yeah. The French taunter in that yeah, movie fun. is amazing. So fucking funny. For a long time. Remember when you used to have uh, AOL Messenger? Yes. Whenever someone would sign off, you could make it say something. Mm -hmm. Mine would say, go away or I'll talk to you a second time. (laughs) (laughs) He has great lines. There's one where he says, uh, he says, we've already got one, right? But that's not my favorite part. We already already got got one. It's (laughs) very nice. (laughs) Oh, yes, it's very nice. Because he's searching for the Holy Grail. Right. He's like, we've already got one. You've already got one. It's very nice. <laughs> <laughs> there's a, there's another line in that movie when Arthur arrives at the guys just digging in the mud. And they start having the debate about how he became king. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And she says, you can't uh, expect to wield supreme executive power just because some watery tart throws a sword at you. <laughs> <laughs> and it's such like a smart joke. Oh, that's one of my favorite in that movie. Some watery tar throws a sword at you. <laughs> it makes you king. Yeah. How do you know he's how do you know he's king? He's not covered in shit. <laughs> oh, that movie's great. There's some great, great lines in that movie. I have a whole bunch of them from uh Spaceballs and uh, Blazing Saddles. Who's the guy that made those? Mel Mel Brooks. Mel Brooks. I got um when they're when they're combing the desert. And then the guys are actually have giant Oh, yeah, 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 I've used, I've used goes, that too. Have you found anything yet? Man, we ain't found, found shit. <laughs> <laughs> a big fan of that one. I like, anytime someone gives me a sequence of numbers, I go, that's the kind of co- that's the combination an idiot would have on his <laughs> luggage. <laughs> uh, I like Raspberry, the when he goes, we've been jammed. And there's actual jam coming out of the screen. He goes, raspberry. I hate raspberry. I always say that for some reason. I don't know why. But uh, and then uh, the harumph in from Blazing Saddles when he's like harumph 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 harumph. Hey, I didn't get a harumph out of that guy. <laughs> we were talking about Caddyshack before. Oh, uh, you'll so get nothing and like it. Yeah, I didn't even think of that. My other favorite is uh, Rodney Dangerfield. Yeah, that's a nice hat. Come with a free bowl of soup. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, you're you're a pretty girl. You want to make twelve dollars the hard way? <laughs> Tell the chef it's low grade dog food. <laughs> hey Wang, don't tell him you're Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that movie's so good. What's the Rodney Dangerfield movie where his daughter's getting married? I don't know. <sighs> All right, I don't I'll take know. two of those, four of those, <laughs> six of those, three of the naked ladies. <laughs> Couple of cards with the naked ladies on them. So many good lines in that movie. Oh my God. It's one of his most famous ones. What? I'll take a hot dog and a hamburger. You get nothing like it. That's <laughs> Your anchor scratched my dick. <laughs> <laughs> that movie's amazing. He's fucking amazing. That he movie. is. Am- all the characters are really good in that one. Bill Murray when he's talking about playing uh, golf with the Dalai Lama. Yeah, I got that going for me. Hey, uh, Dalai, uh, what about a little something, something for the effort? effort. <laughs> Big hit of the llama. <laughs> that that whole bit is great. 
<laughs> he said when I die, what do you say? I'll find a uh, perpetual bliss or whatever. Because I got that going for me. <sighs> easy money. Easy, easy money. money. Do you ever see Easy Money? Uh, it uh, sounds uh, familiar. I never saw it, though. That's with him and uh, Joe Pesci. And his daughter's getting married, and he's trying to get money uh-huh. for the wedding. And uh, Joe Pesci walks downstairs in Rodney Dangerfield's house, and Rodney Dangerfield's daughter is playing the piano. So he goes, oh, that's a pretty song. Who is it? And she goes, Scales. And he goes, huh, I never heard of him. <laughs> that that line always gets me. I got to see that, that too. Gets me. No, Easy Money's great. Oh, really? Oh, I it's a great movie. I don't think I ever saw it. Oh, it's really funny. And Ladybug's. Oh, Ladybug's such a good movie. Man, I got a lot of balls. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that movie, if it came out today. Oh, no way. No, most of it that stuff. Oh, oh, my God. I watched it recently. They ask him where it hurts. He's going to need a dog. <laughs> There's a gay joke in that one. That's, There's so many. He's outside with his wife, and a, a guy on a bike passes, and on the back of the bike is his kid in like a little baby seat. And he goes, he's going to wonder in 10 years why that kid, after staring at his ass for 10 years, something like that, he's going to wonder why he has a boyfriend named Rufus. And I'm yeah, like, whoa. Yeah. Yikes. Yeah, there's a lot of bad like stuff that you never get away with nowadays. No, but hysterical. Yes. But absolutely hysterical. Yeah, but uh, all of those early... Listen, I've, I've always been listen. a... I love when Mike prefaces his thought when he says listen. Because Don't get me wrong. I, all humor makes fun of someone. Yeah. We've just decided there's certain people you can't make fun of. Right. And I don't understand why that's a thing. Because, you know what? It's a joke. Because, yeah. It's not... It's There's no such thing as bad words or people you can't make fun of. Mm-hmm. It's the intent behind everything behind it is right. what makes it good or bad. Mm-hmm. So you take a hand at someone. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm in full agreement with you, man. Crying? Are you crying? There's no. Crying. Are you crying? There's no crying in baseball. Oh, what a good There's one. There's no crying in baseball. I'll follow you up with a baseball quote. I say, "Fuck you, Jobu. I, I do, do it myself." myself. <laughs> oh, From Major League. That's a good one. Come on, another baseball quote, guys. Uh, you build it, and they will come. Yeah, keep, yeah let's, <laughs> let's try to keep it going. Baseball quote. Oh, go, I got go one it. from that same movie. Okay. When he runs out, he goes, "It's a rat with wings," because <laughs> he kills the pigeon. <laughs> Seb, can you keep it going? Funky butt loving. That's from one movie. That's a baseball movie. Yeah, yeah, it's from uh, Rookie League? of the Year. Rookie of the Year. Is okay. it? Hot Ice, the best of both worlds. Oh. Rosenbaga. <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> Rosenbaga. <laughs> I have one from one of your favorite movies, Joe. Okay. Cats and dogs yes. living together. Yes. Oh, Ghostbusters. Yes. 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 Good one. And it's dickless is, over here. Is that true? <laughs> yes, Your Honor. This man has no penis. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hope the listeners are understanding any of these quotes. Oh, they have oh come to. on. Come on. If you listen to this show, they so. should know. Do you movies. not know those? Oh, I know. Uh, I knew that one. Uh, I knew that one. Uh, let's see. Keep you, the change, you filthy animal. Yes. <laughs> From the, ori- the from the movie it's actually from or from Home Alone? Well, is that a real actual movie? Or? I think that's a real movie. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. From Home I'm, Alone, yeah, I assume, yeah. yeah. Scanned by kidney right now. <laughs> There's some good ones in Home Alone. Crowbars up. We'll come back after dark. Kids are scared of the dark. <laughs> Shut up, Marv. You're scared of the dark, too. <laughs> no, I'm not. What about from A Christmas Story? You'll shoot your eye out, kid. I say that all the time. Yeah. Do you? Yeah. It's just, you know. Stop, stop letting them play with rifles. <laughs> No, whatever he's doing. Like, stop. You shoot your eye out. You Don't know. you know our family history of bread knives? Just shoot your <laughs> eye out. <sighs> hey, man, you got a joint? What's no, not on me. Be a lot cooler if you did. What's that from? They seem confused. confused. I don't know that Oh, one. me and uh, Zaylock use that one all uh, the time. A lot of mine, a lot of mine are going to get uh, serious soon. Yeah, well, that's why I'm kind of running out of there. Yeah, I think I shot, uh, shot my load on the, uh, on the funny ones. My next one is... From Rocky IV, if he dies, he dies. <laughs> you have a lot of, yeah. lot of poor causes in your life to use that one. No, I don't necessarily use that one, but I like that one. I say, You know what? I do say it a lot. I don't know why. Hey, Brick, you do. might want to lay low for a while. You see the man with the trident. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I did. I'm That's proud great. of you guys. You kept your head on a swivel in a vicious cockfight. <laughs> What's that from? It's from Anchorman. Anchorman. Oh, I, I don't know that movie good enough. After well the after the big uh, anchor brawl. Right. Yeah. It was a bad idea. I think he killed a man with a trident. <laughs> <laughs> Loud noises. <laughs> what is it? Uh, what's the quote one? Seventy five percent of the time it works. It works. Yeah. Oh. Sex Panther. Yeah. Sixty five percent of the time it works every, every time. time. Yeah. 
That movie's got a lot of good ones. Yeah. Uh, it smells like Bigfoot's dick. <laughs> <sighs> it's so good once it hits your lips. Oh, God. Oh, old school. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so I'm going streaking. Yes. You're my boy, Blue. <laughs> I see Blue. He looks glorious. <laughs> yeah. Uh, or bring your green hat. <laughs> Snoopaloo. Snoop. Snoopaloo. You come to bring your green hat. <laughs> Old school. We, I saw that movie. God knows how many times. What do you got, Steve? Nothing, wants, nothing, nothing. Nothing. He wants to go more serious. Funny. Go serious. I got serious. I though. got a uh, copyright DM. Seize the day, boys. Make your lives extraordinary from uh, Dead Poet Society. What you got? Oh, okay. I have um, one from Tombstone that I love. It's after the scene where they have the, the gunfight in the river, and Wyatt Earp just breaks, and he right. walks down the river shooting everybody. And then he says uh, at the end, Doc Holliday's talking to one of the guys, and he goes, where's Wyatt? And he goes down by the river, walking on water, because <laughs> they're amazed at, the, at what he just did, the gunfight. I'm your Huckleberry. Yeah, that's a good one. This... I got two guns, one for each. You're so drunk, you're probably seeing double. That's okay. I got two guns, one for each of you. Yeah. Uh, I got one from Gladiator. Oh, so do I. Is the same one? His big speech? Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Which Steve. one? My name is Maximus Decimus uh, Marius, yes. yep. commander of the armies of the north, general of the Felix Legions, loyal servant of the true emperor Marcus Aurelius, father to a murdered That's son. That's the best part. Husband yeah. to a murdered wife. And I will have my vengeance. In this life or the next. I love oh, that man. effing Bravo, line. Steve. Thank you. Bravo. Oh, my God. That's such a good line. Love it. I'll stay in that same brain, vein of movie. I have two from Braveheart. Okay. okay. One, and I use it all the time because I talk to myself a lot. Yeah. Like when I'm thinking, I just talk. You're fucked. No. <laughs> no. That's a good one. But, but uh, the uh, the Irishman in that movie, I think his name's Stephen. Oh, yes. He's talking. He's having a conversation <laughs> yeah. with God. Yeah, yeah. And then the other guy goes, are you talking to the Almighty? And he goes, it's the only way an Irishman could find his equal. <laughs> and I, I use that all the time. They're like, are you talking to yourself? I'm like, it's the only way I can find my equal. That's great. <laughs> and uh, this, they may take our lives, but they'll never take our freedom. Yes. Mm-hmm. Just an amazing line from that That's movie. That's always a good one. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody have the Pacific Rim speech in there? No. <sighs> We're canceling the apocalypse. Yeah. It's the only part I know. <laughs> it's the only part worth knowing in that movie. Yeah. Sebi, you got another one? Uh, I only got two more. Oh, I got a whole bunch. What you just said is one of the most oh, idiotic, <laughs> insanely idiotic things I've ever heard. At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. Everyone in this room is it's now like, dumber. It's like all the fears listened. that I have for picking on Billy to read the fucking paragraph in the textbook. <laughs> Jesus. No, but that one's great. The, the end of that one is the best. May God have mercy yeah. on your soul. Oh <laughs> Simple no would have done. <laughs> Everyone in this room is now dumber for having heard it. Yeah. That's so good. That's it's, a great line. In that's that a good one. They said it was a million dollar wound, but the armor must have kept that money because I ain't seen a nickel of that million dollars. As far as gum. I love gum. that. Yeah. Must have had me about 30, 40 Dr. Peppers. <laughs> um. I got one from Jurassic Park. It's yeah. one of my favorite ones. Your scientists were so preoccupied with whether they could, they didn't stop to think if they should from Ian Malcolm. Yeah. That's one of my... I use that all the time. I actually play that soundbite in my class when we talk about evolution and, and G, uh, GMOs and stuff. The oh, greatest trick the devil ever pulled is convincing everybody didn't exist. Yeah. Just, from Usual Suspects. Yep. That's yep. from our theme song. What are you talking about? It's not yeah. Usual Suspects. Yeah. Uh, I, a movie I love that probably no one else has seen is We Were Soldiers. Yep. Uh, Harrison Ford there's and it's none of them are Harrison Ford lines it's um, his sergeant what's his name the old uh, he's an old grizzled actor he plays his sergeant in that Tom movie. Berenger no it's not Tom <laughs> Berenger it's one of Wyatt Earp's brothers oh I know the older brother Philip Earp no the no. guy from uh, he's on that Netflix show now sure but he has some great lines one of the one of the his privates is like beautiful morning sergeant he's like what are you a fucking weatherman now <laughs> he's so <laughs> gruff <laughs> And then at the end, uh, he says, you still compare yourself to, hit, uh, to Custard, sir, because uh, Mel Gibson's character thinks he led his men into an ambush like Custard. And he goes, you're not like Custard, sir. Custard was a pussy in you, ain't? <laughs> he has some great lines in that movie. What about Gunny from uh, Full Metal Jacket? Uh, wow. The best speech ever. The best speech ever I in didn't know movie. Stack, they stack shit that high. Yeah. What the fuck is that? <laughs> What in the fuck is that? A jelly donut? A jelly fucking donut. 
I like you, you climb obstacles like old people fuck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's yeah. some great ones in that so many good ones so many that whole movies. speech that whole beginning oh yeah oh or even the second half of that movie though when he's like you, you you uh all i ask of my men is that they respect my orders as if they were the word of god i don't watch that once they go to war like i only watch the boot camp yeah i can't watch it once they go to there's the, some good parts yeah. in that second one once they go to nam we love you long time. Yeah, bang bang too big. <laughs> too buku. <laughs> too buku, that's what it is. Yeah. Uh, my favorite one of all time, I think I use it weekly, is from Willy Wonka. Yes, and I used, used it, la- it last I week. I used it last week for Joe Zalax uh, when I answered his question. Remember I said I was going to put oh, the Transformers you, transition? You lose. Yeah. You lose. You get nothing. Good day, sir. I love mm. that. And then he keeps going on with it, and he, with the explanation, which I, I got to memorize that cetera, eventually. Et cetera, et cetera, yeah. I'm surprised you, you didn't use your favorite drink. quote. I have a whole bunch more still on here. Yeah. Chew bubblegum. Oh, kick-ass chew bubblegum. It's not a lot of references in life where you'll use that one. All There's plenty. Bubblegum. Well, you guys say that all the time. All the time. <laughs> what movie is that from? I never They I live. Never, they live, right? Now. That was his name? <laughs> right, oh, uh, Nada. Nada, right. I, I ate his I, liver with oh, fava, fava beans, beans and, and a nice Chianti. Yeah. Yeah. I have Shawshank Redemption. Ooh, yeah. Get busy living yeah, or get, get busy, busy dying. dying. Or Andy Dufresne crawls. What was it? Called thirty miles, thirty yards of river shit came out clean on the other side. Yeah, uh, there's some good ones in that movie. I, I'm surprised no one has anything from Star Wars. Yeah, I, I know is my favorite one. What Han Solo? Oh, I love you. I love you. you. I know. I know. Yeah. Oh, you're not gonna like this Han Solo movie. Eh, it's all right. <laughs> they they use that joke again. Ah, uh, really? Yeah. Uh, What's his face? Lando says, "I hate you," and he goes, "I know." Uh, Spoiler alert. <laughs> try not, try not, do or do not. There is no try. That's a good one. That's a That's really a good one. one. That's a good yeah. one. I like that one. Oh, did I do the Lord of the Rings one? You shall not pass. Do you, you do that all the time? Shall not pass. I love that one. We're gonna need a bigger boat. Oh, that's a really good one too. It was very good. I forever sing that song. Farewell and adieu. Or oh, swimming with bow-legged women. Yes. Yeah. You say that one all the time. Here's the swimming with bow-legged women. <laughs> I don't even know what it really means. I also say from Lord of the Rings, uh, when Sam goes off on Gollum about potatoes, oh, yeah. <laughs> I say that all the time. Yeah, you do. Taters, you know, potatoes. You do say I say that, that a lot, all, all the time. All the time yeah. I don't know why, but I love yeah. it. I love that line. I, I, and people have said this to me at work. Toss me. <laughs> what? <laughs> Toss me. Don't tell the dwarf. Or don't tell the elf. Uh, act like a man. What's the matter with you yeah, from oh, the yeah, Godfather? Yeah, you, you say yeah. that to me a lot. <laughs> <laughs> That's sort of like my theme yeah. music. The Goodfellas quote where they're sitting in the restaurant and Joe Pesci, Pesci loses his mind. Am I a clown? Do I make you laugh? Yep. Yeah. That's a good scene. You got me thinking of Joe Piscopo now. <laughs> my my mother my mother hit me once. 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 <laughs> <laughs> what movie is Johnny Dangerously? Johnny, you ever see Johnny Dangerously? With Michael Keaton and no. Joe Piscopo? Dude, you gotta watch that one. It's really funny. It's a good uh, one. We don't have any Predator in there. Oh, get to the chopper. He's buried in there like an Alabama tick. Oh, yeah. If he bleeds, we can kill it there. Oh, there's so many good ones. I don't have time to bleed. There's a lot of good ones. A lot of Jesse Ventura ones at the beginning. Dylan, you son of a bitch. Yeah. Yeah. It's only a flesh wound. (laughs) It's just a flesh wound, yeah. It's a flesh wound. Is that the Black Knight? Yeah. (laughs) There's a whole bunch with him in it that's really good. Yeah. This that whole movie. Like we only touched on it before. Yeah. That whole movie is so good. Broken Arrow is one of my favorite. From not the movie Broken Arrow, from mm. again we were soldiers. Oh, like, oh yeah. Broken Arrow. Mm-hmm. It's like what's that? It's one of American positions been overrun cuz I use that all the time. When someone asks me how like something went bad, I'm like Broken Broken Arrow. It's Broken <laughs> Arrow. Welcome to Put him in a party bag. <laughs> that's yeah. one. That's one I've heard you say a ton. <laughs> That's a good one. What are Sean Connery ones? There has to be some good Sean Connery ones. I'm Bond, James Bond. Oh, I was gonna, I thought about that, the one with uh, the interview f- with uh, on 2020. When he said it's okay <laughs> to gonna, smack a woman. Okay smack a woman every now <laughs> as long as you use an open hand. Yeah. Jesus. So I'm surprised you don't have any Back to the Future quotes. Oh, that's a good one. You use a ton of them all the time. I do? Yeah. You used one, but you use the one all the time. Where we're going? Roads. Roads. Yeah. Where we're going, we don't need roads. Can I have a Pepsi free? <laughs> <laughs> McFly, hello, hello, McFly. Oh, I say make like a tree and get out of here. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And people yeah. look at you like, what? what? Yeah, I'm like, have you never seen Back to the Future? <laughs> yeah. 
They're like, that doesn't make any sense. I, I know. Right. That's the point. It's Leaf. You sound like an idiot. <laughs> Say it wrong. <laughs> make like a tree and get out of here. That was on the other night. I watched it beginning to end. Like, be, yeah. at one in the morning. I uh, love that movie. That was an excellent little segment there. So I want to thank Paige for uh, giving us the idea for this. That was a lot of fun. Hopefully it was a lot of fun for you guys. I doubt it. I doubt it too. It was, it was just a bunch of morons saying their favorite movie quotes. But I was hoping we were going to play That's it. basically every day of our lives. We went together. Yeah, so Steve true. told me before he wanted to play a game where he played a movie quote yeah. and we guessed oh, it. That's Shut a really up. good idea. But he decided not to because we didn't. he didn't want to get Because who would know all the quotes are you ready? Woman here, here, or Dirty Dancing? Here was the first question. Nobody uh-huh. puts baby in a corner. <laughs> what movie is it from? Roadhouse. <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> Really, it's Dirty Dancing, you jerk. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was just joking. I didn't make a list. Oh, uh, that'd be fun to do. I just yeah. made up that story. It be, it'd be hard, a lot of work to pull them, the clips, but I think yeah. it'd be even more fun to hear your interpretations of them. <laughs> <laughs> so we don't even have the context. Oh, oh you should have done that. Yeah, well, I didn't have time this week. We're recording early this week. So give Tony a lead in for Comic Book Corner, please. Take it away, Tony. Pew, pew. Comic Book Corner, brought to you by Comic Book Jones, located at 2220 Forest Avenue in Staten Island, and Royal Collectibles at 9601 Metropolitan Avenue in Queens, New York. Visit these fine establishments for all of your comic book needs. All right, so Comic Book Corner. Joe, did you read anything this week? I love how you, you could have told me that prior to no, me saying no, no. His timing was almost perfect. <laughs> hey, Joe, so excited. You read anything? No. Nope. Oh. <laughs> Such a shitty look when he gave it to. Oh. Nope. <laughs> All right. Well, Go ahead, funny guy. You take it. Need even poutine. No, I haven't read anything. I'm oh, did you have any good poutine? poutine? Oh, yeah. Did you? Did you go to that, um, like the chain place, or did you go to like. Uh, a- we did go to that late night place because it was the only thing open, but I went to the. Steakhouse. Mm-hmm. Oh, I had the poutine there. Oh, oh. Yeah. What they put on it? Steak. <laughs> <laughs> and gravy. Was it steak on top it was of steak fries? On top of fries and, and a skillet. And oh. cheese curds, right? Yeah, and cheese curds and gravy. Oh, yeah. Oh my god. Oh, that sounds good. So I d- I didn't know even they had it, and I saw it on their menu, and I was like, oh, I'm gonna try. Yeah, because that seems like a fancy place to have yeah. a, oh, a poutine. It's delicious. We had I oh. had that and a steak and the baked potato, and I was in heaven. That twice baked potato. Oh, that was really good. I. I spent probably two months after we ate trying there, to recreate trying it. to figure out how they made that because yeah. I found them frozen. Like you could order them yeah, frozen, yeah. but they're not the same. Omaha steaks does them. No, do. no, that comes. Oh, that comes. Oh, wow. I don't even know if we say that right. It's Moishes, isn't it? Yeah. There you go. They they uh they they sell them in Canada. Oh, okay. Oh, so but good. Uh, no, I don't know. That's the best potato I've ever had. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it'll ever live up to it, but that was the best potato I ever had. I'm, we've gone back now how many times? I've and, been there twice. And every time I've had it, it doesn't disappoint. And yeah, the Long Island iced teas. Yes. Those are yeah, very I had good, that yeah. too. Those are really good. So can I do comic books? Yeah, go ahead. Oh, Sorry. yeah. Talk about your comic books, nerd. <laughs> um, so there's a, a line. Joe's called, talking about steak, women, and cigars. He's talking about Superman <laughs> pushing up your glasses. He never mentioned anything about cigars. <laughs> Um, so Steve cut it out. So there's, <laughs> Too manly. There's a new storyline that we've been talking about called the Hunt for Wolverine. I've been talking about right. it. Joe, no, Joe hasn't. Joe hasn't. It. I don't know if you heard him before. <laughs> but there are nope. There are four. I just want to say, go out and read these. There are four like offshoot stories. Uh, one is called the Adamantium Magenta. You told Agenda. me there's one where Daredevil. He's got to like find Wolverine. It's called right? Weapon Lost, where Daredevil is like the detective looking for Wolverine. Set, pay attention. Check down. <laughs> You got the Adamantium Agenda, which is Spider-Man, Luke Cage, uh, and Jessica Jones, okay. and like kind of reminiscing about Wolverine. Like they're looking for him too, um, but they they reminisce about this one time where they were in this one time in Bandcamp. <laughs> this one time Wolverine where, stuck his claws up my oh Jesus was, wow up your poutine. Um, so there was a there's a bomb in a bank, and like if they disarm the bomb, like by cutting the wires and stuff, it'll have a 200 foot radius but if they let it just blow up it have like a 200 mile radius so one of them has to kind of sacrifice himself so wolverine's like i'll do it i'll i'll probably be fine in the end and they're all kind of reminiscing about like that moment when he gave you know himself up so um willingly to right. kind of save everybody um then there's one called the mystery in madripoor which is the newest one and that was like an all-girl cast it was psylocke rogue uh kitty pride 
Domino, Storm, and Jubilee, they all go to Madripoor to look for him, and uh, Viper gets them. So okay. that was the return of Viper. And the, uh, the last one is called The Claws of the Killer, um, which is all kind of like the, the mutants that are like him in that one. So you got Sabretooth, X-23, and Lady Deathstrike, and they're called all kind of like reminiscing about how he had such a big role in their lives, and even though they had their ups and downs, that he's still important. He was still an important person in that mm-hmm. So check out those four books. They all deal with the Hunt for Wolverine, which is going, uh, I don't know when the next Hunt for Wolverine book is out, because that's like the main title. That only has one issue. But check those out. They're pretty okay. cool. And I read Hal Jordan, which you said is now being canceled. Yep. So it's Hal Jordan 46. And they are doing the Dark Stars. Did you hear the Dark Stars? No. Nope. They're like the bad boy police force. There's uh, there was there's like a... Are they the group. Highway Patrol of... The Green Lantern Corps? Uh, I, are they the bad boys? Are the Highway Patrol the bad boys? Yeah, Highway Patrols are like the... No, these are the cops... Are they with. the super troopers? These are the cops that kill people. The, they, they kill criminals. Okay. They won't bring them to justice. They're like They're Punisher. Just, like you, yeah, exactly. And the Green Lanterns are trying to stop them. Um, but Guy Gardner got recruited into the Dark Stars, so that's where it left off. Hopefully oh. hopefully they finish up this storyline. So he's like the Farver. Do you think uh, Van Der Beek, yeah. whatever? The, Van Skyver? Yeah, maybe he canceled the Van comic just so you can't get one. <laughs> right. Oh, sure. maybe it was a preemptive strike. <laughs> oh, that would be terrible. Steve loves this book. We're going to cancel it on him. He'll never get Green Lantern again. Oh. One star on eBay. I'll show yeah. you. <laughs> yeah, wait, hold on. No, you know what? I did leave a, a negative comment. I did. You want me to read it? Yes. I can read it on air. You like Pacey better? <laughs> what? Is that from like Beverly Hills? What is that from? What's, who's Pacey? <laughs> Dawson's Creek? Yeah. Because he's hey, mad at James Vanderby. James Van Der Beek. <laughs> Some oh, drunk rant. <laughs> you guys. About Green Lantern on his page. Oh, I don't know where it is. It's going to take forever. Oh, he, he writes so many negative comments about things. No. I didn't. You should have made it like one of our funny Amazon so, reviews. Tell other comments. No, it's not that big of a deal. Yeah. So right? he has a ninety. He has a ninety nine point two percent positive feedback. That point two is Steve. That he point has, eight that came off. He yeah. has two negatives in the past Uh-oh. twelve months. Both. He has two Steve. negatives in the past six months. I'm sorry. Ooh, that's not a good. Two negatives in the past six months. One is from. No, uh, they block out the names, but one says original art. Uh, it was for an original art figure sketch. Uh, this person paid four hundred dollars. For their item, and they say the item was ordered on 214 and the item never arrived, no contact, multiple tries. So, this person had the same problem I had. I wrote from Steven Inicelli, bought the item, paid immediately two months, <laughs> bought the item. I wish you could have saw Joe's face. Paid immediately two months ago and never received a thing. That's all I wrote. You but yeah, made I did. a funny thing, Steve. What was I supposed to write, Joe? Something about James Vanderbeek. <laughs> I don't know anything about James Vanderbeek. I never watched that show. Uh, all the, you would make fun of me so hard if I said I ever watched Dawson's Creek. I watched Dawson's Creek. Dawson's Creek was I know. amazing. So anyway, social shit time. It's time once again for your favorite segment. What time is it? Social shit time! All right! You remember La Boom, Joe? Remember our, our episode? How could I forget? Titled La Boom? So... Uh, Kate commented on our Twitter. She says, here's a blast from your past. I remember one of your episodes from last summer was titled La Boom. Well, a bunch of my wrestling friends are all excited about one of the UK shows coming to the US this summer. And guess where this NYC stop is going to be? I'll be there. At La Boom. I'll be there. There you go. If you want the you dates. find Joe there. It's August 7th, Joe. Doors open at 7.30. Um, then I put out there, um, I wanted to know everybody else's movie quotes. Uh, famous movie oh, quotes. Oh, all right. So... Um, our friends uh, Sean and uh, Will from Dudes in Toyland say, uh, this is from White Men Can't Jump. So Wesley Snipes, oh. White Men Can't Jump. Sun shines on a dog's that's, ass some days. That's a good one. Um, Nick Cage from the Firebirds says, shoot them, blast them, nab them, grab them, shake them, bake them, cook them, clean them, hold them, boil them, kick them, nab them, twist them. All gone. Bye-bye. I don't know that movie. I don't know that one. The Firebirds. I can't believe I read that all without... Screwing you it up. very well. I like that. Um, Nate Appleby from uh, Aussie and the Palm Show says that he says, Stryker from, this is Airplane, surely you can't be serious. Don't I am call serious. Me serious. Stop calling me Shirley. And don't yeah. call me Shirley. 
That's a good one. Call Me Shirley. That's a good one. Slap me around and call me Susan. What movie is that from? Blank Man. Thank you, Seb. <laughs> Blank Man. I remember that. More Gooder Than Podcast says, uh, so this is from Dr. Jones. Um, I'm as human as the next man. And then Indy says, I was the next man. I don't know which one that's from. What? Is that from Last Crusade? Which one's that from? It's in Indiana Jones. So it says it's Dr. Jones and then Indy. So I'm assuming that's Sean Connery. Oh, okay. And, and oh, oh, yeah. That's when he sleeps with. They both sleep. Figure out they slept with the blonde Nazi. Oh, I love her. Yeah, she's my favorite. I'm assuming as the next man. He's like, I was, was the, the next, next man. man. Oh, that's right. That's yeah. right. Um, oh, this we, no one. Yeah, Jones. One time, yeah. no time for love. Doctor Jones. <laughs> Doctor Jones. Doctor Jones. That was Chow Chow. His name was Chow Chow. Chow Chow. Um, we met Chow Chow today. Wait, yeah, what? Met Chow Chow. Last Johnny's week, dog. We, Johnny's dog. Remember he he, he adopted. A little <laughs> Did he Chinese. actually get a dog? He got yeah. it. Yeah. Oh yeah. A black lab. Yeah, it's really cute. What did he call it? Chow Chow? Ricky. Ricky is the name. I don't know why. It's a girl, too. Uh, Matt Lees on Twitter says, uh, where we're going, we don't need roads. Uh, mm. You're killing me, Smalls. He goes, you're killing me, Smalls, which I which I say to people here in the UK, and if you guys think no one gets that joke, <laughs> <laughs> my goodness. <laughs> Thanks, Matt. Appreciate that. Uh, he also says uh, another one of his favorite quotes is from Who Framed Roger Rabbit. And he said, you wouldn't understand it, winky face. So I don't know which quote that is, because I wouldn't understand it. He doesn't, he's never seen Roger Rabbit. He's never seen I, You. I, I've seen Roger Rabbit. Oh, is that why I would never get it? I've seen it. What's his favorite quote? I'm not bad. They just draw me this way. <laughs> oh, that's a good yeah. one. Um, FYFC Studios podcast says, you're going to need a bigger boat. And give me some give me some sugar baby from Army of Darkness. I'm sorry, Army of Darkness. But thank you for that. Oh, I won joke of the week according to our, yes, our host Sebastian with the chow chow comment. You have to, you have to go back and listen you have to, to it. Yeah, this is that yeah. one. Because we told you, you, asked, you said you're gonna you're gonna end up uh, adopting a Chinese boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and I'm like, well, my name Chow Chow. <laughs> yeah. No, you said you're not gonna get a you're not gonna get the dog you wanted, Chow Chow. You're gonna get a little Chinese boy, Chow Chow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And um, I just started laughing on the train today. We were talking about our the first movies we ever saw in the theaters. Mm-hmm. Um, Marie DeZio had mentioned that last week. Mm-hmm. That I think oh, Willow. What, well, Willow was her her first movie in the theater. Seb, Seb you got? Do you remember your first movie in the theater? Uh, yeah, it was. He uh, said batteries, batteries not, not included. included. Oh, that's right, batteries not included. Yeah. Mike, you remember yours? What, no, we, I don't. We didn't. Mine was Transformers. <laughs> um, Transformers the movie. Kate says my first movie in the theater. Was one of the. It wasn't Casablanca? Mine? Yeah. Nah, I was too old for it then. Um, she says it was one of the re releases. One of the re releases of Sword in the Stone. Oh. Okay. I wonder if that's the Disney one. She's talking about the Disney one? Yeah. Then? Yeah, I guess so. Oh, yeah. That's, that's one of my favorite Disney movies of all time. You know, that's not how it works. It's just going to go through your headphones, you dope. I know. Okay. What the? <laughs> I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> I don't know what Sebi told. Sebi leaned over, and whispered something to him, and they're gonna do. They're gonna make fun of me somehow, and so you know how I'm gonna combat this. This is how I'm gonna combat this. You ready? I'm gonna combat this by saying, join the conversation on facebookcom oh, slash oh, podcast. We were making fun of you. Literally taking the air out of the ball and going home. Check out our Instagram. What about Twitter the rest of the movie quotes? At dinner in a podcast. Wait, what about Joe's question? Yeah, we yeah, really have Joe's question. You're a terrible friend. I'm a terrible friend. Yeah. All right. You're ruining all the so fun. So go ahead. Answer Jose well, Alex's question. What's his what's question, question again? <laughs> oh, right here. Such good friends. You know his question so by heart. His question was, uh, did the comic book movie genre reach its uh, plateau of popularity? Has it reached its bubble yet? I'd like to take that question for 500, Alex. It's all yours, Mr. Tambini. You'll get nothing and like it. You get nothing. You lose. Good day, sir. So like I said at the beginning of the show, we had two new reviews on iTunes. So make sure that you email us at dinner and podcast. That's uh, Bulls in the Ring and music underscore lover. Make sure you get to us uh, your email addresses. Get us any way you can. Email, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, any way you can get us your email addresses. Then I'll give you that link for the free subscription to MoviePass. And on that note... Join the conversation on Facebook.com slash Dinner and a Podcast. Check out our Instagram and our Twitter handles at Dinner and a Podcast. And email us any questions and comments that you have at Dinner and Podcast at gmail.com. Big thanks to Andrew Brooks for the amazing artwork that he does and the amazing animations that he creates for our YouTube channel. 
Check those out by searching Dinner on a Podcast on YouTube. And if you want to see Andrew's other work, visit andrewburksportfolio.com. Alejandro Rosado, who made us our amazing artwork. You can follow him on Twitter and on Instagram, at Alero Art. That's worse. Uh, Will Shelton for our awesome theme song. Follow him on SoundCloud at William underscore Shelton. And lastly, a big thanks to Tony Wolf, who is the voice that you hear on all the bumpers during the show. Follow him at Tony Wolf is on Twitter and Instagram. Until then, I'm Steve. That's Joe. That's Mike. Stephanie, thanks for coming in. We'll see you later.